don't tell me what to do. <laughs> and I love it how we just started the episode right when you told me not to tell you what to do. I'm uh, keeping it there. Uh, hello, <laughs> hello everyone, and welcome back to the final episode of Star Trek Adventures set in the Expanse. It has been a hell of a ride uh, between Nighthawk, Cerberus, and the Expanse. It, I have an entire fleet under my GMing belt, and it feels pretty good. Most of which, commanded by play, most of which have been occupied by players within this group, and I could not be happier to have them as my players and friends. But you're not here to listen to me drone on for too long about things. Well, let's just dive right into it, and let's just have a good time. Captain, you have the log. Speaking of droning on, mm -hmm. Captain's log, start date, 85037.3. Despite their previous fragility, uh, <laughs> nice start, uh, fragility, the U.S. Concordia has been asked by the NALU to rescue a crew of a failing space station in the Chimera system, far away from the territory the NALU normally claims. Naturally, they are tight-lipped about why they are asking us for help instead of doing it themselves. End log. Okay, so we are going to start at high warp. Uh, roughly um, a day or so out from the space station. Is there any scenes that you guys have in mind? Um, I have one. All right, where would you like to be, Mr. Nall? Um, kind of coming up on the bridge. Sure. We are on the um, bridge. All the key people there. Um, apparently, I haven't updated the bridge since last session, but yes. The captain and Hadrix are around here somewhere. And I'm guessing Moose yeah. is down in engineering. Yeah. Unless Moose wants to be up here, he can be here. Yeah, Moose can be up here. I think he'd appreciate this. Sure. Moose, you're busy what? tinkering away at something. Let let us have the doctor here as well, just in case. Oh, oh perfect. Okay. <laughs> the random McCoy thing, he just hangs out on the bridge for absolutely <laughs> no reason. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Okay, so we have Hadrix. We have the captain. We have Freliza just sitting in second officer. Yeah, we'll, yep. yeah, we'll be in second officer, and Moose is busy looking at the stuff on the screen. Finally, getting a finally got getting a Moore's console fixed from the blowout that happened last week. While Turn. he's doing that, I'm I'm just like reading through a pad. Okay, doors hiss open, and out comes Lieutenant Brassnall. Permission to know the bridge, sir. I have donuts. The captain might be muted. Ooh, hey. donuts. Mmm, donuts. You see Brass pushing a cart. It's got two little um, silver drink dispensers that have some type of steam coming off of them. And the cart has boxes, white cardboard boxes on top of it. Comes in and says, Sir, I just wanted to express my thanks to don't bring me up to um, to a shift and looking back in my cultural appreciation studies back at the academy and then working with Moose, I found that donut starting the shift was the Earth tradition. Did you bring coffee? I brought coffee. Excellent. And <laughs> some of these donuts are. Are specially made for racial preferences. Says, mm. um, Captain Bashir, I have a spiced tuber root cream filled donut for you. Commander Hadrix, a pooter bean jelly filled. Primrose, it's the donut kind of has like a, a blue almost glowing gel. This is something I, I found in the archives called Miracle Grow filled. Um, Dr. Felicia, um, this one is, it's hard to find something that was good for denogulins and ricins. 
So I kind of made a mix of pooter bean and tuber root. Hmm. All right. So cooter root? Cooter root. Cooter root or tuber root. <laughs> then you see no. one box no, kind of... Cooter root is not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> then you see one box kind of start to like shift and then fall off the cart. The donut kind of comes out and starts squirming on off down towards the elevator. Uh, I'm... I'm sorry, why was that donut moving? Oh, he bends over, puts, picks it up, puts it back in the box. That was in case I didn't know the full alpha shift. That was in case we had any Klingons on board. It's a gawk filled donut. Uh, oh. With fresh gawk. I see. Alrighty then. For a split second, I thought you were wanting to maybe scare one of our Klingon crew members, and that was a tribble you had hidden there, but I'm glad that we don't have to worry about those on this ship. Uh, what I did to keep the Klingons away from the donuts, I put little fur coats over the top of them, and they look like tribbles. Better than real tribbles. <clears throat> you hear something coo under your seat. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> Punted at the view screen. <laughs> Enjoy any guys are carton. Leave the coffee here. And cruise on out. And with that, Noel. So he leaves the cart by Nix, who looks at the donuts with a should I or shouldn't I expression on her face and thinks it best that she take one. And she takes a bite and goes, hmm, Hasperat. I'm going to walk over and just find, like, a regular glazed donut. And Please there. say there is none. <laughs> to include powdered. Oh, because that's what we need all over our consoles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mine's currently being repaired, so I don't have one. Ah. Uh. And they're touchscreen anyway. That just makes them sticky. Right? That's yeah. what I'm... Thinking. And we can clean <laughs> it. like the Jellic build. <laughs> I'll pick, like, the most uninteresting one and grab the thing of coffee and then go back and stand. <laughs> uh. All right. Anybody else got anything? Um, you know, uh, we haven't had a, a random checkup in, uh, med bay, Let let, let's have for Lisa check on our, uh, new Lieutenant. Ah, is that Mr. Null? Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Null, you, um, uh, at the end of your shift, uh, you have received summons that you are... It is now your time for your six-month physical. We will find oh, you joy. down in the sick bay, which is here. Where everyone is, of course. Here we go. Let's see here. Press comes in. Doctor, you requested to see me? Yes, uh, figured you uh, haven't had your physical yet on this ship, so I figured I should just uh, get it out of the way now for you. Understand? Nothing better, just like preventive maintenance. Exactly, exactly. Uh, eh, just take any of the bio beds. It's fine, we don't have anyone right now. Is this like a test? If I pick one on the left, it's... It means no, something different this, than I picked the one on the right? No, this isn't a trick, Lieutenant. You say that now. <laughs> you have uh, memories of uh, Miss Day's uh, psycho uh, therapy sessions. 
Uh, he kind of looks at Dr. Fleece's eyes, which one she's kind of eyeing a little bit more, and he picks the opposite one. <laughs> they just sort of shrug and walk over and just start making some uh, preliminary scans. Let's make sure our lieutenant's in tip-top shape. Uh, any illnesses, allergies, etc. that I don't know about, Lieutenant? Um, nope. Everything should be in the records. Next. Um, well, finishing up my scans, uh, seems like you can... Seems like you are the picture of bully in health. Uh, Maybe you which really only got Maybe get some momentum. <laughs> nudge, we'll be nudge, wink, fine. Wink. We'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, in terms of named individuals, uh, Lieutenant Finnell seems to be one of the only uh, more important bullions on this ship, but uh, it's good to see you're in shape. Um... Actually, and they'll just walk into their office and they come back and the, and the 2400 is a bit odd, but has a uh, lollipop that they just hand over to you. The ginger pop? You'll find out. Ginger stick? What am I supposed to do with it, Doctor? It's a lollipop. You eat it, suck on it, do whatever you want. Is it like a Tootsie Pop or one of those big, huge, round ones with uh, the little layers that keep going into the middle? Uh, it's kind of like those <laughs> really cheap ones. They're usually like, it looks like one of those cheap ones that's usually like fruit flavored. Oh, like a Dum Dum? Yeah, basically like that. All right. And just starts to to chew on it. Uh, you find that uh, oddly enough, it tastes like uh, bullion tonic water. Hmm. Your own recipe? Eh, it took a while to get right, but yeah. There could actually be a market for those. Well, do you have any people you could connect me to for that? Uh, can make some calls to a brother, to a cousin, to a niece. <laughs> well, uh, if you don't have any uh, questions for me, medical or otherwise, Lieutenant, uh, you're free to head back to your station. Thank you much. And if you have some samples of those that I could send. Hold on. <laughs> and they just grab like a couple more from their office and hand them over to you. It might have to go a lot farther down the line and each one will want to taste. Yep. Do you have like a, a box? I mean, I only brought a few because I didn't know how many bullion patients I'd have. Uh... If we make a stop at Deep Space 15 afterwards, uh, I can think about getting more. No problem. I can at least get things started with this. Speaking of more, uh, it looks like he appeared right outside Sick Bay. Oh. <laughs> I'm Lagos is carrying me in as we were uh, sparring. Ah. <laughs> sparring, quote unquote. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Doc. <laughs> and I'm, I sort of ignore her more, and I look over at Lagos. What did he do? Uh, we were just doing some like uh, drills with a uh, blade, since you know he's actually decent with it. Yeah, I caught him. Mm. You see the uh, several bumps, bruises, and gashes on more. Oh. For God's sake. All right. Um, Lieutenant, you're free to go. Uh, just send him on a 
bio bed logos. I'll I'll get a dermal regenerator for him. So, and I'm just whispering. Don't don't tell me you've been using that gift the captain gave you too much. I mean, kind of, but this is legitimately not from that. We were sparring in the gymnasium, and I caught the uh, edge of a blade. Okay. Um, well, I guess the one tip I'm going to give you is try not to use it in too public of a place. Oh, I don't. More people know what a Horgon is than you think. I'm aware of it. I, I knew what it was. I'm not before. saying you didn't know, Lieutenant. <laughs> Anyways. All right, let's get the storm regenerator on you. Um, and I guess is there a roll I'd have to make to use this dermal regenerator on him? Yeah, let's give you some let's give you some momentum. Uh, control medicine difficulty 0. Okay. <laughs> it isn't the most major emergency, but emergency medicine. <laughs> mm, nah. You can say no. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Where the shot. <laughs> Go ahead and blow your determination. No, not on this shit. There's All right, yeah. Momentum. Awesome. I suggest waiting a bit before you decide to use blades again. Duly noted. I remember at one point when we were on Deep Space 15, you had considered using... Was it a whip, if I remember correctly, Lieutenant? Yeah, I mean, that same... Uh... I just... <laughs> I give a not-so-subtle look between... You and Lagos. And then Moore has the oh god aha moment. <laughs> There's your I got it. Alright. Okay, doctor. <laughs> um Try to make sure he doesn't hurt himself again, Lagos. I can try, sir. Uh he does a pretty good job of that on his by himself. I'm well aware. Uh, more just leaves with like a defeated look on his face. Uh, all right. And as the scene, as the do doors close on the doctor's face, we're just looking, wonder what the heck has happened. Anybody else have scenes? I'm not hearing anyone, so. Enough time passes that the USS Concordia drops out of warp at the extreme range of the uh, Cherim planet. Which happens to be... Uh, so the planet is two, or is a uh, binary star system with a red giant dwarf and a white... No, not a red giant dwarf, a red giant and a white dwarf. There are several small class um, A planets, which are like Mercury, uh, between it and the planet in question, which is a class L planet, and orbiting that is the station that is in question. Uh, there are several asteroid belts. This does appear to be a fairly um, disjointed system, being a binary star system and all that. Feel free to roll, you know stuff if you have any if you want to there more ah there we go where i don't know, i know this is far away from their area like who are we near right now you're basically equidistant between the nalu and the uh tip of the uh, lashunt <sighs> if i had the if i gave you if I had thought ahead and pulled the um, 
yeah, put a copy of the map online. It's uh, the planet is Simia, and it's just at the tail end of the Nalu Empire area. Okay. To the galactic north of the Lashunt. Um, Moore is going to just kind of, any more out of habit, scan the entire system and <laughs> see if uh, any strange anomalies show up. Ah, so that sounds like a good thing. Uh, this will be a insight science. Ship will assist with sensor science. Difficulty is two. Astrometrics? You betcha. I'll grab the ship. You go for it. Oh, Ooh, that is Ooh. four successes. Nice. So two more momentum. So I technically reroll. <laughs> okay. Do you want to reroll that zero? Sure. Why not? Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have technical expertise. I might as well. Oh wait, no. No, oh, no. It's sensors. Yeah. Far be it for me to deny a player's use of their mechanic. Oh, that's an. <laughs> oh yeah. Point. Okay, we're now maxed out on momentum. I want life signs on the station, too, and uh, also to... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, more you notice uh, several things. Uh, the first is that the space station is roughly the, the size of Deep Space Nine, uh, so it's about one kilometer radius. There's about 200 life signs on board. Uh, one mass of organic energy that's being held sort of in the center of it. And the rings around the station aren't life support or, or you know, habitation rings. They appear to be uh, gravitational generators pushing inward. So basically creating a pressure depth of a significant degree, which is perfectly understandable given the Nalu like to live at depths. Um, not much of it. Uh, there isn't much life to be found on the planet. It appears to be early in its... Um, evolutionary state or it could just be that the f that because it's in a binary star system life just won't evolve here uh, it's approximately 85 percent land 15 uh, percent highly sa highly saline water <clears throat> uh, class l atmosphere and the star is quite interesting i mentioned earlier it was a red giant and a white dwarf there is a it appears that the white dwarf is leaching excess hydrogen from the red giant and the conditions are such that it's possible that you are about to witness a recurrent nova which is a rare occurrence um, where a star system of this nature where the white dwarf or similar star takes excess hydrogen from its larger from its nearby brother and when the temperature heats up to, I believe it's about 10 million degrees Kelvin, it go boom. Uh, How long do we have? I, there uh, you go. There's your question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Moore will uh, communicate that out, just kind of reading off his readings to the, the bridge without really caring that if anybody was talking because he's engrossed in his work. And then he looks up and went, oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, the free question, how long do you have? You have approximately two days. Okay. So, more will say that. Um, we have about two days before uh, we are going to have uh, a little bit of a light show on our hands, which would explain why the Nalu wanted to be evacuated. Do we have uh, the space... Um, uh, space for 200 people. More just kind of starts scanning uh, his readouts to see. Uh, easily. Yeah, I was gonna say we should be fine. We can we can we can, yeah, refigure the uh, uh, cargo bays and. But first things first. Uh, let's hail them. Okay. So. Um... You open communications, and you're greeted by this individual who appears on screen. Uh, 
This is Greetings. Hello. I am Matriarch Quela of the Nalu. Who are you and why are you here? I am Captain Bashir of the USS Concordia. Uh, we were sent here uh, by your people to investigate and help you with anything you needed. Her eyebrows furrow and she looks uh, to someone off screen. Um, Moore uh, and Lagos, your, attack, your consoles light up as they detect that you're being scanned. Hmm. We are unaware that we have... Ah, we are unaware that the matriarch, or that the Fathomess had sent for aid, especially from a, an alien species. Our... It, was, it was a strange request, um, but agreed. It does seem that... Uh... You are in some dire tr trouble. You only have two days until the sun blows. Uh, I'd like to proceed with evacuation, if possible. Oh, uh, she, her eyes go wide at this. We had detected some disturbances on the sun. We were unaware that this was going to be a problem. We had thought that hiding behind the planet would be sufficient. I don't think so. I think uh, if we can't move the station, I think uh, we're going to have to get you all out of there. All right. Uh, roll me a presence plus command test, please. Uh, difficulty of three. Presence. Use the die. <laughs> yeah, I am. Command. <clears throat> die and diplomacy uh oh there's uh, that's two successes uh, do you have any ability to reroll uh, any of those shoulda 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 did bold command ah uh, well um benefits from the donut Yes, the do donut was, has well, I power. Was, I was going to throw in uh, more just sending over the uh, data from that his readouts on the Nova and coming up. Well, if you want Yes, to... assist, assist. <laughs> or, actually, I've never been able to use this. I have the advisor talent. Oh, oh. Whenever you assist another character using the command discipline. Oh, wait, I'm not assisting. Oh. Never mind. Uh. You can assist. You can assist. Assist. Okay. If you spend two mo if you spend two momentum, I will let Hadrix assist for to create the advantage. Yes, assisting. Plus the fact that the the talent also, um, the character being assisted may re-roll one d twenty. Oh. Okay. Oh. So you're you're now down to three momentum. Hadrix, feel free to assist, and Bashir, please re-roll one of those zeros. Hadrix, how are you assisting the captain in this? Um, I'll use my Nalu, um, friend of the Nalu okay. ability. Yeah, you know, just reiterate my, you know, my maybe say something along the lines of, um, you know, we have helped the Nalu before, and we are in the good graces. Plus, I have diplomacy. Fair enough. Uh, feel free to roll your assistance, because apparently the captain. I'm fucked. <laughs> oh wait, no, I don't have diplomacy, but I do have composure. I'll let composure work. The captain likes rolling 19s tonight. Yeah. Damn, and roll a 17. Uh, you know what? Because you spent the two points for the advantage, I'll let that work. Uh, very well. Uh, captain, while we. While I assist. While I get. Ah. While my sisters uh, prepare for evacuation, may I visit your ship? Certainly. I look forward to it, Captain. Goodbye. And with that, she disappears. I look Jump. over at Hadrix. <laughs> uh, that was weird. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. You know, these Nalu are a little interesting to deal with. Uh, why don't you join me in the, uh, 
transporter pad and uh let's see about uh what she would like to say okay yeah. to the transporter room let me just get tokens going here okay it would help if everybody else was in the transporter room Okay, you head over to the transporter room. And Tegan, you have received the coordinates. Granted, they're, it's a little tricky to get, but because the character is, or uh, because Quayla is underwater, but it's not, diff not too difficult. You've done worse. Hendrix and Bashir, enter. So, there is a beaming of sorts, and out pops Major Quayla. She is far shorter than the Nal than most of the Nalu that you've met. Uh, she stands only about four foot tall. And what is most interesting is that she is holding a teddy bear. Greetings. She's uh, her eyes. Ah, she she breaks into a very easy grin. Hello again. It's so nice to see you again. Again, we've never met. Oh, of course. I apologize. Uh, she, and her sh with a brief flash, uh, she changes into her into a about a ten year old girl with a white dress and a large uh, foppy hat holding a teddy bear. Did I do good, ah. Papa? Did I do good, Papa? As she looks behind you, there is a brief flash. No, 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 no! <laughs> Yes. Even Brad got an engineering got chilled down his spine. <laughs> you, you hear a scream from Sick Bay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there will be screaming, just not the type you imagine. Oh, you did. So, oh, really? Oh, yeah. You did very well, sweetie. This is the. This is how you do a proper test. Ah, you see, it's so difficult. You know, my first time being a parent, I went straight for the big and flashy first. You know, talking, teaching my children how to knock stuff, knock stars and into orbits and, you know, cause warfare between civilizations. No, I figured this time, this time we're going to start small with mortals. And how to do a proper test. See, the first thing is to get them into position. Then you have to make sure that they're not expecting you. Just like this. Then you catch him off guard. Captain. Fuzzy one. Good to see you again. See? How may I be assistance? Well, I have to admit, Captain, that... Well, we were talking, and, well, quite frankly, this could have gone much more interesting. And quite... This is, you showed up far too soon for the big fireworks to start. I mean, it's partially my fault. I should have moved those stars a few, uh, a couple thousand kilometers closer. Would have triggered things a bit sooner, but uh, live and learn. So, uh, so, so is the station real and are the people actually in danger? Well, yes, of course that's that's a real station and of course they are will they are in danger just they had the shuttlecraft and whatnot needed they just didn't think that well they're arrogance mortals am i right he looks to his daughter who just nods up and down so here i am just watching you in starfleet immediately zoom to the rescue and get there before you my plans are you know all the fun starts and then I had the most interesting of ideas, actually. And he... I have an individual in your crew to thank for this. 
and he reaches uh, there is a quick flash and all of a sudden moose is here moose you were down in engineering doing something or maybe you're just getting off duty or preparing for the you know evacuation of the station when all of a sudden there was that flash and you're now here Uh, okay. Yeah. See, I have you to thank for this wonderful idea of mine, Mr. Moose. Who are you? Oh, how quick you forget. That station, you know, those ale, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm cute. Remember the Eddie? I, as I say, I basically point, tap him on the shoulder and turn and show him the little girl behind him. Oh, I remember you, her, you little uh, one. Hello, big hairy man. That's true. How is your leg? Is it better? It's doing fine. That's good. No, no, dear. First thing you have to learn is you do not fraternize with the test subjects. Now, you have... Starfleet has come a long way in technology. And quite frankly, it's boring. Makes life a lot more interesting back in the old days. So I figured, why not? There is a flash, and all of a sudden, you are on the bridge. But it's not a bridge that any of you recognize, except for Mr. Moose. Oh, Jesus. Ooh, is it an NX era, or is it the Columbia class refit? It is NX era. Hmm. Moose just looks around. And... Yeah. Okay. Hope you guys like dials. Uh, and buttons. Dial. Never... I know what a button is. Computer? The computer does oh. not answer. Right, yeah, you have to do this, and I will go to the wall and just press the button. I was like, Betty? Betty does not answer. Mm, More. This might be four. Uh, yeah, More. Definitely. Scan the ship. Uh, are we all here? Uh, More will go over to what he thinks is the science station. Uh, all right. Uh, control there plus. <laughs> Sorry. Well, he's looking at this console's going, how? But he's going to try. Okay. Uh, this is going to be an insight plus <laughs> science, and you will now see a character sheet in the ship for the SS Concordia. And oh jeez. That, that ship can assist with. Uh, Sensors plus science, and this is going to be a difficulty three because you have no idea what the heck's you have no idea how to work these old things. I'll, I'll the, grab, I'll grab the SS Concordia. Focus? Sure, um, yeah, I'll let that work as a focus. Well, at least I have technical expertise. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, hey, ship, we got a momentum for that. <laughs> Nice. Okay, still you get one momentum. Fantastic. Okay, so you know t uh, a couple things. Uh, first is that most of the crew are gone. Uh, you only count about, uh, I believe it's about 55 life signs on board. Actually, no, let's make that 70. All your support characters are present. Uh, so if you want them to tag along, they're more than welcome to do so. Uh, but other than that, your sensors identify this as the SS Concordia. Uh, registry number is Q-001. Uh, of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah. Uh, now, while this is going on, um, so down in sickbay, uh, Dr. Uh. Freeze... You uh, old technology, huh? Yeah. <laughs> the all of a sudden, this is this is your life now. Um, Sirtha is very confused. Your wife, honey, Hi. what? Hold on. 
I for Lisa to the captain. Nobody answers. I look around for something that looks like an equivalent of an. I guess at this point, like an intercom system, I guess. Yes, intercom <laughs> systems. Yep, you would find some. Uh, because it's sick bay, there's a couple right by the uh, emergency bed on rails, by the scanning pod, or by the door. And because comedy, uh, it probably takes him a few tries to press the button that gets him to the bridge. Uh, yeah, you make it through like the mess hall, engineering, sick bay, which is very weird. And then the bridge. <laughs> and then and then I find the button that is labeled bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Captain? Yes, doctor. You hear no hesitation in the question. Did Q do this? <laughs> yes, doctor. Are and you well? Hear... <laughs> I'm fine. Is Q there? Yes, doctor. And just like in some phrases that somehow don't get caught in the universal translator, you'll hear just a string of expletives probably in the both the Denobulan and Ryzen languages. Right, uh, more here, it's every bit of them. Oh yeah, you understand language. every bit of that. And just blushes over in the corner going, oh god. I was going to say, at this point, the ship probably can't do real universal translating. No. Oh yeah, that's right. Which, yeah. yeah. Why good I you have me. Uh, Q, by the time you're done, uh Q just flashes in behind you. Doctor, no, doctor, no, doctor. no. Why are you here? <clears throat> well, if you're going to swear at me, doctor, it's only fair that I respond in person. And he gives you a big hug. There, there. Uh, 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 um consent, please. And I just sort of push him away. <laughs> Oh, and here I thought you Ryzeans were so friendly and open. You, your words wound me, Doctor. I am not with you. As he still has me on the phone. <laughs> oh my god. Doctor? Yeah. Doctor? Please don't upset the omnipotent being. Q? What? To the bridge. What <laughs> do you want, Q? It's not about what I want. It's about what I want for you. And this is... He looks to uh, Sirtha and Krim. You have become far too dependent on your tricorders and your medical technology and these magical sprays that heal everything. No. I just want to see what happens when all that is reverted somewhat. But I go somewhere else because I choose to, not because it's suits you and with that he flashes away <laughs> okay or scan this uh scan the station scan the planet scan the stars are we still in the same situation no you are not you know this well so you are approximately one day's travel from the uh star system if you were at max if you were on the uss sutherland However, you are now approximately about two and a half, three days out from the star system at your maximum warp five. Captain, this right. is going to take us a while. Yeah, Primrose, set course. On it. Well, I see maximum that. Maximum warp. <laughs> I see that the pieces are in play, and this should make for a much more interesting show for me. And, of course, my little girl. Tut off for I now. Actually, I actually completely ignore him. Reinhardt, you know this system? Get down to engineering and give me everything you can. We need to get there as soon as possible. At best, I can give you 5.3. These Do ships... what you can. Well, Gus, what are we working with first? All right. Yeah. Head, head on down. Head down to engineering. Primrose, Just... set course. You got it. More, I want a plan. I'll start working on it. <laughs> All right. So, down to engineering. Where? 
Uh, Lieutenant Null is busy trying to find the various manuals. The computer is not being very helpful. And, <laughs> and at the same time, he's going, engineering to, to sickbay, Dr. Feliza, what was in those lollipops? Engineering to medbay. Engineering to medbay. I can guarantee. Oh, you can't hear me. You don't know what you're doing. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Moose, th th thank God you're here. Yep. Is, is, does everything look normal to you? Yep. Looks good to me. Um, how can I contact Sickbay? Nothing. Communications aren't working. Why do you need to contact Sickbay? You hurt? I might be in a situation, in a involuntary state of disassociation. No, no, I'm you're sorry. fine. But nothing looks like it should. Can't find the tech manuals. No, uh, there's there's not really any manuals. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Q. They were in the computer, sir. Yeah, yeah just blame Q. And what am I going to do with these lollipops? I can't have my family sell something like this. If it's going to make people... What, what was the phrase? Trip balls? I have no idea what you're referring to. Anyways, can you read? Can you understand the readouts on the screens? A little... It's that the translators don't seem to be working, so I'm having to rely on basic Federation standard. Okay, everyone, come over. We're going to do a huddle. And he's just going to gather everyone and show them the monitor. He's like, this is the intercooler mixer. This is the pressure for the deuterium lines. This is the pressure for the cooled deuterium. Fluctuations in the power grid. Keep an eye on that. Magnetic restrictors. But the touch, the touch screens don't work. Yeah, no, you have buttons. They're abbreviated with what the touch screen buttons would be typically. They might be a little different. If you got questions, push the button. If no alarm sound, you're good. If something starts blaring, push the button again to undo what you did. Hopefully. Hi, sir. All right, let's uh, let's start working on structural integrity field. We need to. Oh wait, now those are the old class two generators. So we're gonna quickly upgrade some things. Find what you can. Take a look at all the parts. See if you can improve upon them with technology that you've learned of. If you need to replicate, yeah, we don't have a replicator either. Well, we have a fabrication bay. You can forge. Do you know how to forge? I had an uncle who got arrested for that. <laughs> Different <laughs> meaning and context. Okay. Okay, never mind then. This is going to be interesting. Just do we sweep over the ship, make sure everything is operational. Well, looking at first glances, it's our, our power is probably barely half of what it used to be. Yeah, no, less. <laughs> We're going to try and uh, push past warp five. Cool. All oh, right. Um, give. Uh, let's see. So give me a uh, control plus engineering. This is going to be a difficulty of. Well, because you're the one doing it, this will only be difficulty three, because you at least have some memory and recollection of things. Mm -hmm. um, you can be assisted by either Noel, Mad, or the ship. Whichever one you want. Uh, Noel, you want to help out? That I can do. Yeah. Right. Control engineering, power systems, uh, warp field mechanics, warp engine. Um, alien technology? No. It's alien well, it is alien to me. <laughs> <laughs> it is old enough. <laughs> but I, I do have power systems. Uh, would I know my ship be of any help? 
I would, you know, if it was for anybody else, I'd say no. But because of the, your specific situation, I'd say yes. Excellent. Uh, so that brings it down to a two. Is that what that does? I believe that's the case. Okay, I'm going to take a mo momentum for a third dice. All right. <laughs> well, that's a six successes. Um, so I believe that bumps you up to max momentum, and you have one floating. Uh, Reinhard, you are over the next hour. The two of you are able to squeeze as much blood from this stone as you can. But as you had accurately predicted, 5.3 is the best you're going to do, and even that is going to have to come in spurts to let various power regulators up. Uh, cool off in cycles but you are going to shave at least uh, five or six hours off the time I'm going to walk over to the wall press the comm button like engineering the bridge, bridge. you have to push Hello, the button bridge. you have to push and hold the button <laughs> bridge uh, yeah I can Hello? I'm, you know what, guys? I'm just going to go to the bridge. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the turbo lift and go up to A deck. And, and Braz goes up to the communicator, pushes the same button that Moose just did. Engineering the med bay. Bridge! <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I need the med bay, sir. <laughs> Let me, let me try again. A bridge. Engineering the med bay. This is Dr. Fulis on the bridge. <laughs> doctor, doctor, what was in those lollipops? There was nothing in them except for bully and tonic water. This was Q. No, it was not me. I guarantee it. What? He said it was you. It's no, not. Q, the letter. You know, the Real circle with the, with the diagonal line through it? Realization dawns. Oh. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and you seem a bit stressed, so um, your, uh, uh, for Lisa, your partner comes over and gives you a comforting massage. Uh, the Orion type, to help you relax. Oh. <laughs> she motions that uh, Krim kindly leave sick bay for the foreseeable future. <laughs> and she just walks out. Doctor, happy ending. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, meanwhile, back on the bridge. You know, the turbo lift ride is slightly shorter than you're used to from engineering to bridge, Reinhardt. It's only about 30, 40 seconds. Ah, uh, nostalgic it is. Yeah. Thank you, Bashir. Yeah, you, there's the uh, hissing of the turbo lift door, and Reinhardt steps out. Commander? Okay, so this is what you do to activate comms. I'm just going to walk over and like hold down the button. I'm like, you have to hold. Not just tap. Okay. Thank you, the Lieutenant Commander. Uh, any hold. luck with the engines? 5.3. Any faster, we're going to start ripping off the hull. That's after uh, inertial dampeners fail and then gravity kicks in from a momentum and we get splattered against the walls. Well, that wouldn't help our situation much. Mm. Do we no. have a docking bay? <laughs> yes, on either side of the saucer. Docking hatch, I should say. Uh, we should also have four shuttles. Shuttle pods. Yep. That could hold maybe eight. How much room is in the do uh, docking bays? Or cargo? <laughs> 
Not we enough. still have two. We still have two hundred people to save. About half a basketball court. <laughs> Maybe double the height. It's gonna be rough. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be rough. All right. Thank you, Commander. Oh, and Lagos, uh, something you have to do is to keep an eye on the deflector shields. Um, the deflector dish. You're going to have to realign every now and then as we're traveling. Every time we drop out, you have to manually readjust it. I have to what? Uh, you and Lagos will have to manually adjust the deflector dish for warp travel. Or we're going to get hit by a small micrometeorite and blow a hole in the ship. Not that hard to do. Just gotta be good at math. Oh, you're all so spoiled. <laughs> he just has this big old smile on his face. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. This was the fun times. The risk of <laughs> death was very real. And constant, apparently. <laughs> yes. Uh, I love it. Okay. Do I have a ready room or a conference room or anything like that? You have a conference room. Uh, you don't have a ready room. Captain, okay. as if, you, if you need a conference room, it's right here. And he's just pointing to the table he's at. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, right. The conference Annex, room is not very big. <laughs> Annex class do have a conference room. That was after the refit from the attack of the Zindi on Earth. Oh, was it? Oh, never mind then. So I have a set piece ready for nothing. Okay. He, 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 has his, he has his personal quarters. You can always have something in. Yeah. And ironically, there's a beagle puppy in my room. I have no idea why. <laughs> Please, we've upgraded. We got a Boston Terrier in there. Ha! Uh, all right. Command staff meeting. All right. Command staff, assemble. <laughs> Which takes two steps to the left. Right. <laughs> Take it back now, y'all. <laughs> uh, no. All right. So <laughs> we're barely going to make it in time, if it's not, if the sun hasn't already exploded by the time we get there. For one, two, we don't have room to save all these people. Three, do we know how to kill a Q? <laughs> this is the only time for Lisa's just out for blood is when Q's are up. <laughs> uh, Doctor, didn't you say just, just, you know, just take an oath about not killing anybody? More is like stepping back as he can feel fumes coming off. Of yeah, and I actually glare. I was like, we don't have time for petty it, grudges. It was a joke, Captain. Understandable. So I just want to and assume that how our do I ship... deal with stress? <clears throat> I just want to assume our ship is the only thing that's been turned back into the past. Everything else is still fine. So the station is still there in its current year, so on and so forth. So we're still in the 24th, right? 25th. Um, yes, we haven't checked. Uh, uh, I was going to say, technically, we haven't checked. But... During Moore's uh, initial stat uh, check, yes, the Federation time beacons out this far do put you at, you know, roughly the same day that the captain made the log entry. So going by that knowledge and what I was able to observe of the station for the brief moment we saw it before Q did his thing. <laughs> I so said that's the only real the only information we really have of what we saw in our scans. What we could do is, yeah, do this up, convert some of the cargo bays over. We only have two. It's not much room. Everything's going to be crammed in. The issue is going to be life support. The life support on the old NX wasn't anything near as advanced, even as a Constitution class. So. It's my apologies for interrupting, Lieutenant Commander. Um, 
life support on this kind of ship, are you saying with, uh, if we were to fill this ship to capacity, there's a possibility of running out of oxygen? Oh, yeah. He looks okay. Yeah, we used scrubbers. We recycled everything on these ships. Hmm. What if we were to use the four shuttle pods able to rotate off 32 people at a time total between the four to kind of less the burden on the life support? See, that would work if they were standard shuttles, but they're not. They... We're in NX era. Great, great. They, um, they need to be refilled with the oxygen from the ship. They don't have their own scrubbers. They have a limited amount of supply, basically in canisters and in some chemical burners for heat. Wow, and I thought stuff, that, so you know, Talaxian stuff was really put together badly. <laughs> well, back in the old days, it was explore and survive. Anything could have been a threat. We always hoped it was a peaceful encounter. But the technology we had, well, yeah, it was it was tested to the point where it would have to be pressed a million times before it would even think about wearing out. So while Earth may have had some nice little advancements, we had to use stuff a little bit behind just because of the durability. Well, if you need to take care of any of these people, uh... The technology is a little primitive. It isn't the right word to use, but I can yeah. make it work. <laughs> I think primitive is the uh, appropriate word to use. Because, I, I mean, out of character, this technology is, what, approximately 250 years old from our... Yep. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> cool. Thank we... God he has quick study. Moose is just gonna rub his beard, and he's like, "The good news, though, is that the station is still at its current level of technology, so we could use that to our advantage. We just have to find out if it's damaged. Cause I didn't get a chance to do a detailed scan. It was supposed to be an evacuation, right? Yeah, and it's going to be cutting it very close to get the." 200 approximate people, Nalu, which is something. What a, the fact that they are Nalu, can we fill a cargo bay full of water for the aspect of they can breathe in that and it wouldn't take away our oxygen and possibly either I don't know that doctor how, how I don't know how the Nalu breathe. Uh or Hadrix do either they, or. Do they breathe through gills question mark? <laughs> uh that is a, uh they actually have dual uh because you have a Nalu on the crew I'll just tell you the answer because well you yeah. probably know that. They actually have dual circulatory dual circulatory systems. Uh one for underwater and one for uh, above water. Now, are they... Are, so... This is probably an incorrect way of thinking about it. Were they kind of like whales, where they can be underwater for a time, and then they need to come up for air? Or is that not correct? No, they're more in line with eels. Uh, okay. They're just eels with are they're like eel centaurs for lack of a better term <laughs> ah eel tars yes now now is it is it top or bottom half eel bottom half is Stop. eel oh <laughs> under the sea i like under it under the sea okay Down anywho the all right if we transfer one of the cargo bay uh i don't want it cuz i don't know if we're going to need the shuttle pods because we'll probably have to use those for the evacuation. If we can at least transport, that would at least save some of our oxygen, would it not? Uh, Captain, uh, if I may, I had yes. a 
roommate at the academy who had a small aquarium and he always had to continually pump oxygen into the the tank and filter the tank out so it's out of my realm but doctor wouldn't we have to do that if we pumped a cargo bell bay full of water it's i mean i'm not sure how well this technology can cut off life support to certain systems or and i look over to moose (laughs) to they breathe carbon dioxide and we could if they're like a planet and they expel oh. oxygen, then we have a, a recirculating system. Hmm. More you three, discuss that. More with me. Hands on his temple. This hurt. <laughs> More with me. I, uh, yep. I want to head over the science. Our... Adrix, help them convert the, uh, for them. More with me. I have a sciencey thing. Oh, okay. Sciencey thing. Yeah. Go. I want <clears throat> to see if there's any sort in this sector of space. Do we have our ours is the computer system still getting do we have the information? for the expanse area you do in the computer systems you do yes okay (laughs) more what i want to find out is there any sort of anomalies any sort of black holes wormholes chronological particles anything that we can use from here to there to boost our speed to get there quicker um let me see what i can do these sensors aren't the same as what we have on our concordia understandable can that's uh, we can yeah. see what it pops up gm yeah so i did a lot of research for the nx era stuff back mm-hmm. for the avenger the computer systems yeah they are very direct you have to specifically specify what you're looking for Mm -hmm. or they don't pull up anything so the files are very yeah yeah Yeah, so they're written in basic it's all directory (laughs) no like no intuitive stuff Mm -hmm. uh so more this is going to be a reason science difficulty of three and the ship will the ship can assist with computers plus science how about me assisting Mm, not in this instance because you're asking okay. more to look through the computers. Okay. I'm gonna do a third die for cautious. Okay. Um I also have technical expertise, so I have two re-rolls. Okay. Astrometrics as a focus. Mm, yep. And a reason science is my power stat. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's uh, three successes. Who's got the ship? Oh, I'll grab the ship. Sure. Never mind. Well, oh, never. I have five. No, oh. I have five successes. I was cautiously my reroll. Okay. Jesus. What was the roll on that again? Uh, computer science. Not that it's really needed. Yep. Uh, that's six successes on a difficulty three task. <laughs> uh, I have two moments. Two floating moments. Yeah, you have two floating. Um... So what you find is you're not able to find much in the way of a direct path. There's um, more you are able to, using your astrometrics skill, you are able to work out a couple nearby suns that you could you could do a slingshot. Yeah, a slingshot, a couple slingshot maneuvers, but it's going to be a very complicated endeavor because you're going to have to do it very precisely and at as fast as you can do it that is of course given that this ship can survive such a maneuver because well it's old i mean it's shiny and new but it's old yeah we don't have shields we breach on a four i think you breach on a four you have yeah you have no shields you have polarized hull so oh that polarized hull if you get yeah you're 
Um, you should learn very quickly that polarized hull plating doesn't give as much protection against radiation. Um, what is our actual time schedule? I said uh, we are getting there, and how long until the sun's explode? The sun explodes. Uh, your ba um, by your calc thanks to the time that Moose has given you, uh, you will have approximately thirty. You will arrive approximately thirty minutes before the star goes um, boom. Actually, no. I'll say let's bump that up to an hour. You have about an hour to arrive before things go boom. Oh, I thought okay. we had like five hours because you said like shave oh. five hours off the trip. I'm... Well, you saved five hours off the trip, so you weren't um, evacuating them against an impending supernova wave. So you'll arrive before things go boom. Well, it's not instead of after. Yes. Um. Free question. Yes. Um. If. Can I calculate quickly in my head, kind of thing, mm -hmm. uh, if slingshotting around either you know a star or a planetoid that we're around here will shave off any extra time? Yes. Um, by doing this, you will uh, be able to arrive about maybe an additional two hours before things go boom. So you will arrive Prim about three hours. Uh, Primrose, do you think you captain. can handle it? Primrose? Primrose? Oh, Primrose. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can work on it, yes. Um, use, use momentum to set the advantage? We, I was going to say, we have two floating momentum that I wanted to use to create the advantage. All right, easy let's do easy. it. All right. Cool. I'll take those two hours. Hadrix. Yes. Did any scans get done on that station, by the way, before we got turned back? Uh, I yes. I think we did. Yep, yeah. you did do one scan of the station. All right. <clears throat> yes, we did have a scan of the station before we left. Uh, let's see if I can find it. And he's just going to start cycling through the directory. <laughs> I mean, you're already at max momentum, so you it takes you a bit of time relearning how things like naming conventions and things work. But yeah, uh, you pull up the scans from Stardate whatever. Target is Space Station. Race of ownership is Nalu, and it goes down from there. It had two rings, though, that we got information on, right? They're, they yes. were... Uh... Uh, they were basically the opposite of gravity wells. Uh, they are... Uh, they, they're like inertial dampeners pushed up to 14. And they're pushing something in the center. Yeah, they're they're basically keeping the station under pressure, simulating an ocean's depth. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah, under pressure. <laughs> okay, Moose is just gonna be working on a, a few ideas. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, all right. So we got Noel and Reinhardt are going to work on the containment field. Doctor you are helping with the water and their breathing and are worried about our oxygen. Mm-hmm. Okay. Moore and Primrose are working on our slingshot attempt. I really hope we have that slow motion <laughs> as we go around the sun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm. All right. Hadrix, type it into, type it into I'm a pad going to... I'm going to sit down in my chair and cry. <laughs> You're in command. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the captain goes down and has a crisis of command. Uh, Sorry, Moose, uh, you were saying something? I was going to type on a pad and then hand it to Nola. Like, eh, you're in charge of containment. Use Bud. He'll help out. I got my own project to work on. Okay. We're all going, Hi, <laughs> we're all going off in separate directions. So... Uh... Does Let anyone walk into a door? 
Several, actually. <laughs> Everyone seems to move for the turbo lift, which um, doesn't open automatically. Captain, you're the first one to leave, to try to leave the bridge. You walk right into the turbo lift doors. <laughs> they don't open. And my Cap beard's on fire. <laughs> Wait. Cap Captain, I think we should just assume that everything needs to use a button right now. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, Captain, you know the little button I showed you on your armrest there that you have to press for comms? Similar button just above it, the yellow one, that opens doors. Yep. Press that and you're good to go. Oh, also the decks are labeled with alphabet, not numbers. Who came up with that idea? For a ship that's barely six decks. It's just easy to do. Is there a read alert button instead of a red alert button? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's called tactical alert. Ah. I am going down to the mess hall. <laughs> All right. And as you go, you hear Noel talking with Dr. Feliza. So if we take the Noel crew member and we expose them to carbon dioxide, see if they can breathe that. I mean, it's something worth trying, at least. Captain, that's on E-deck, by the way. Thank you, Moose. <laughs> e for E. E for everything. All right. Just because I think it amusing. Captain is going down to the mess hall. Yes. <laughs> uh, there, if anyone wants supporting characters, there are, there are several here. They're all fairly confused. Um, the funny thing is uh, Taravis, the Vulcan, is wearing a chef's outfit, complete with a foppy white hat. He does not look pleased with this situation. You too, uh, huh? <laughs> as as the captain enters, Taravis just shouts or speaks slightly louder than normal. Finally, someone with answers is here, everyone. Captain, uh, would you like some food? Apparently today it is steamed carrots, rice, and chicken teriyaki. No, there are no substitutions because there are no replicators. Chicken, chicken teriyaki. Sounds fascinating. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Eat. <laughs> I was like, all right. Thursday yes, there. I know this. Uh, oops, wrong screen. How about presence? Wait, are, we're, are we still at max momentum? Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't need. Basically, I'm just going to like. Kind of, I'm going to leave, try to leave the Q thing out of it as much as possible. And just kind of like, we've had a issue. Things are a little wonky. We're still on mission. We need to save this Nalu station. Relax. We have it all under control. <laughs> Uh, Thursday is there. She's in the T'Pol style one, like one at a one speak hat suit. She's just looking at herself and just shaking her head. How does a now? Oh no, do the Gorn have tails? I don't think they do. Uh, some of them do. Okay, uh, does... but yeah, you know, she has a small one. Okay. Now, is there a hole in the cat suit for the tail, or does the cat suit extend around the tail? It extends around like it was designed for it. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <sighs> Taravis, after the speech is said, Taravis goes, hooray, we're saved. Then he goes back and back behind the mess counter to deal with, apparently something has caught fire. <laughs> How old is Travis? Um, probably over a hundred Vulcan. <clears throat> Tegan will just say under his breath, I wonder if he was alive when the these were around. <laughs> Captain? What do you wish to do? As I say, I'm just uh, waiting till we get to the star. 
basically, yeah, I want to calm. I'm gonna, I'm, on, I am actually gonna eat something and calm everybody down. And I will go. I'm, I'm actually gonna go around and do the same thing. Um, basically, talk to the crew, considering that we only have ca like the little speakers, mm -hmm. um, and go around and talk to the crew and basically let everyone know that. It is a strange situation, but we're still on mission. We have to save the Nalu. Cool. All right. Now, so let's um, do some tests. So this is going to be a, a work. This is going to be an extended task, basically to get your guys as ready as possible for the upcoming uh, Gong Show. That is going to be the actual rescue. Uh, so this is going to be a work track of 25. This is going to be a difficulty of 4 to start with. Uh, there will be a resistance of 4. And it will be a magnitude of... Let's go also magnitude 4. Okay. Alright, I'm going to start. Okay. With presence and command. As sure. like I said, I'm going to round and talking to everybody and trying to get, you know, basically motivational speaking. Yeah, sure. Um, if you have uh, diplomacy or public speaking as diplomacy yeah, or crew management, that might also work. Diplomacy, All lead right. by example, is the other one. Well, that's so. not going to be much of a success there, no, I'm afraid, Captain. It is not. I am willing for quap. No, okay. Um, the crew acknowledges your presence and gives a very hollow uh, sir yes sir whenever you give your speech but they are very deeply unsettled by this many of them many of them have lost their friends in the flash uh, many of their friends were not transported oh were not deemed necessary enough to the plot to be brought over so they're just in limbo and you're seeing a lot of personality uh, despondency so, um, other fe folks that can do tests will be, of course, uh, Bashir for doing the medic for doing the uh, ah, what am I looking for for doing the water environment setup. Uh, Noel for keeping the engines going or uh, also doing, you know, environmental setup. Moose, you mentioned your own project. I'm very curious to see what that is, but I'm fairly sure that would follow under this, and. If anyone has any other ideas, please let me know. More and Primrose are coordinating how we're going to slingshot around the star. Okay. Um, I'm going to do the star thing as a separate task. So this is just I figured. Yep, getting you guys ready. Also, um, what would my task be for the uh, for the setting up like the medical stuff for the yeah. Nalu and all that mess you were talking about? So this is going to be a insight plus medicine or possibly control plus medicine no or reason plus medicine uh, okay to figure things out uh difficulty of four of course and the ship can assist with structure plus medicine okay okay um let's go ahead hmm Let's do uh, let's do three momentum for two extra dice. Sure thing. Um, and rather than having the ship assist me, could I actually have Krim assist me? Yeah, I don't see why not. Uh, so control awesome. or re uh, so either insight or reason medicine, I think, would be work well here. I can get Krim. Okay, uh, we'll have Krim do insight. Definitely. Yeah, we'll use insight medicine for Krim. Oh, yeah. And this is an activation, so good time for one of those missing talents or missing focuses to become a thing. I mean, you know, biology, she already has. Oh, perfect. yeah. Yeah, she All does. Right. Uh, do you have a we'll Give her, like, biology. Miracle Worker. <laughs> I wish there was Miracle Worker for medical stuff. Oh, my God. <laughs> closest thing we have is surgery savant and that's only for surgery yeah. 
Okay, two successes from oh. Feliza. Oh, me. Service Actually, has? Nope. Okay. Let me look at my talents really quick. I might be able to. I beat you to it, Hadrick. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Ha. Hey, I got a success, uh, and we'll take mine. Actually. Oh. Oh. I'm just looking at things. Um. Oh. Since this is a uh, primitive technology, to say the least. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you say that this involves an unfamiliar medical procedure? That's stretching it, but I will, because I feel magnanimous, sure. So that lowers it to difficulty three, so we pass. Awesome. <laughs> so if you could please roll me seven challenge dice there, please, doctor. I shall, good sir. All right. Seven challenge dice. Wow, that's oh. a lot of effects. That is a lot of effects. Do you have anything? Um We could spend a momentum to... Probably need to spend a couple momentum because it's resistance four, you said? Mm-hmm. Ugh. Um... Because what? With the momentum spent for that, it's two per momentum spent? Correct. Right? Yeah. So one. Okay, so, so currently it's two successes, and then you, you know, could be four or could be six. Yeah, let's let's spend two just to get rid of the resistance. Okay. So you have. So a that way we have. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so we're at work track nineteen. This is now a difficulty of three, and this is going to be a magnitude of three. Ah, uh, so um. This is one area where things actually work well in your favor here, Doctor, because of uh, the rigidity of this design. It's actually very um, pressure resistant. And it mm. can, because no one gets a, has a, a firm idea how much uh, force a contained amount of water will put onto a bulkhead or anything like that. But thankfully, uh, the NX class were built to survive a lot of things, which means that every wall is pretty much load-bearing. Uh, so because of that, you're able to uh, significantly reduce the amount of... Uh, or you're able to sig ah, significantly reduce the amount of structural reinforcement and habitation requirements needed that you first feared. Excellent. All right. Um, Moose, you mentioned that you had an interesting project. Yeah, Moose is going to be going through the scans of those two gravitational rings mm -hmm. and figuring out exactly how much power they need to maintain that um, the station with just one. And, and uh, basically, he wants to make a cushion ah. with the second one. Interesting. So idea. what it, it takes to impact, but then it also allows it to ride on the shockwave. So it can be propelled by it. Gotcha. So this is going to be a reason plus engineering, I believe. And the ship can assist with computers engineering. Or any one of your uh, cohorts can assist if you want them to. I'll have the ship assist. Okay. Because I'm, I'm kind of doing this in my own little space. That's what I figured. If someone could get the ship, please, and roll computers engineering. I am going to use a milestone ah. for two successes. Okay. Down to five. I mean, this is the finale, so if you have uh, unspent milestone points, guys, now might be the time. I have ten. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can only still do so once per episode, but, you know. And just because I'm going... Uh, oh, no, that'll be... Mm. Okay. GM, mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm gonna give you some threat. Oh, good. So I can get a third dice. That's good because the second I did a Q flash, I spent all my threat. So <laughs> thank you for giving me more. Oh, if that's the case, son. Hmm. How much would I did to you? That's already what though. Uh, so yeah. yeah. So two threat for a fourth dice, three threat for a fifth. So five in total, huh? Yeah. 
Yeah, sure. It's the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So I'll have four dice to roll. Um, jury rigging, experimental technology, warp core mechanics, electroplasma systems. I think electroplasma systems might be the best one here. Okay. Ooh, ooh that's... um. Let's see. So you got two already, plus two, plus one. So that's five. And another two from the ship. So seven successes in total, which means you get four momentum. And if you could please roll me seven challenge dice, please. I want to use the momentum to re-roll those zeros. Okay. Gladly. So seven total. So that's currently and... three work done towards the track. Uh, let's see. So seven... I mean, if we take away one, that gives us a breakthrough. Yeah, Just let's do that. Momentum. Let's okay. do one moment for a breakthrough. Sure thing. Uh, because, uh, guess what I have? Yep. Miracle Worker. Oh. Two breakthroughs? So, uh, if at least, well, yep, two breakthroughs. And I also have a nick of time. So every effect rolled is an additional. Oh. We're done. Okay, oh. so that's three more on top of that. So that is a grand total of five. So we took off eight. two. Yeah. Eight, so seven, we're at 11. Okay, this is now a difficulty of one test. And made it to one. I believe I have the math right on that. Okay, uh, so you're spending the pretty the days in your cramped quarters. They're not as roomy as what you had become accustomed to, but they still feel sort of like home in a weird way. Oh, it immediately feels like home because oh, yeah. he's a soldier. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Uh, let's see, where were we at? Okay, um, Null or Hadrix. Do either of you guys have things that you want to work on during this time? What I'm probably trying to do is I'm going to try to, after figuring out how to do a shipwide communication, kind of, you know, work along with the same way the captain's doing and try to calm everybody down and try to, you know, bolster their spirit. Ah, okay. Try to put a little bit of Hadrick's jovial, joviality into the situation. Can I offer an assisted uh, support character for you, Hadrix? Thursday, she's the ship's counselor. <laughs> yeah. Sure, yeah. Well, I'm also deciding to kind of blast out my milestone right now. Oh. If that's okay. Yeah, I'd say go for it. Well, it's going to involve increasing my command to five and switching out my collaboration security with coordinated effort. Ooh. Sounds like a good one. Go for it. Okay, uh, so presence plus command, and the ship will assist with. Let's do communications plus command. Or unless you want Tuesday to assist, either way. Thursday. Thursday, wrong, wrong, Gorn. I'm sorry. If you yeah, want let's Thurs... have let's have Thursday support. Okay. Uh, so Thursday can assist with presence plus medicine. And I'm going with composure as a possible fo as a focus. Yeah, that'll work. Um, psychology, maybe she's like instructing Hadrix what to say to help. Yeah, probably for the best. I don't know why they didn't save my five. Technically, that second one should be a um, success because uh, um, the command should have gone up to five, but I don't know why it didn't t save. Uh, try closing your sheet and reopening after you make the change. But ah, okay. Either way, that is uh, four successes on a difficulty one roll. So you're back to max momentum. And if you could please roll me seven challenge dice there, Hadrix. Nice. Uh, so that is four before you knock off any resistance. Oh, actually, even that um, coordinated effort during an extended task, the, an assisted character... Mm -hmm. Me, they gain either scrutinize two or progress one benefit when they roll their chase. Oh, you, you got real glitchy there. So you rolled two what now? Um, get either scrutinize two or progress one benefit when I roll my challenge dice. Ah. And which one do you wish to take? Good question. I got to go back for a third to 91. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm afraid I don't know what those are off the top of my head. Um, I didn't even know those existed. Eh. Okay. Um, so, in the meantime, while he's figuring that out, uh, Noel, would you care to roll something engineering related? Well, we still have to figure out the life support requirements. You do. If we have a way to contain the, contain the water, we still have to figure ways to get either oxygen, whatever the, the Nalu get out of an atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, control plus engineer. Uh, no. Roll me reason plus engineering, please. And the ship will assist, or someone else can assist, with structure plus engineering. Um, design and prototyping, maybe? Yeah, I'll let that work. And we only got three momentum? Uh, no, you should be maxed. Uh, Scotty okay. hasn't updated that. All right, well, I will give you a threat. Okay. And then I'll take two momentum for a fourth die. Okay. Oh, giving me the cheap option, eh? Hmm. Emma Call, you good for my extra effect? Yeah. Uh, what's uh, What do they do? So we're going to go scrutinize two, which means I ignore two points of um, the extended test resistance for each effect rolled. Oh. So, oh. well, but then, but then again, I think it's just straight up scrutinize two. Yeah. Okay. So thanks to the scrutinize thing, you uh, are able to knock off all the resistance from that. So you immediately... Uh, so while the captain does his thing and is not doing the best of luck, uh, because you're first officer and the crew is, you know, used to working with you on a more one-to-one -one basis, you, plus your friendly Talaxian demeanor, uh, you seem to have a much more calming effect. Do you have a specific speech in mind? Because I like speeches. Oh, yes, yes. Crew, this is Commander Hedricks. I know that we're missing friends and family. I know that we are you're definitely in a... Mm -hmm. so, sorry, you're... I mean, as amusing as it is to hear you robot in and out, which sounds precisely like a communicator from those days. <laughs> you're roboting. <clears throat> gotcha. Um, hang on. I'm going to jump servers. Uh, that'll give you a couple seconds to prepare your speech. Uh, let's see here. I always move it in a weird place. Nope. Server settings. Let's go here. Okay. Uh, let's try this. Patrick's? Yes, sir. Oh, that sounds better already. Okay. <laughs> Crew, I know we have people that... Commander Hedricks, I know that we have friends and family that we are missing. I know that we are in a ship that is beyond our capabilities right now because of its simplicity, but I have the best faith in all of you, and we can get what we need to do and, need to get, and we can get to our destination. So to all of you, do your best. And we will get there. All right. Cool. Okay, so Brass had rolled a complication, but sadly, that's obviously not a complication, is it? Because you re-rolled thanks to Bold? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so while you're busy trying to figure out the fabrication bay, which is pretty much like a... Uh, th a giant size 3D printer and some metalworking equipment. It's kind of fun by the end of it. You're able to uh, create various uh, life's basically a large um, aquarium pump. That should be ex that should be able to uh, support enough life enough individuals or at least a, a cargo base sized aquarium. It it might not be quite up to snuff, but it should do the job long enough for you to get them somewhere where they can be better suited. And... Sounds good. Okay. Now, while everyone's doing that, Moore and... Uh... 
I've Primrose. Primrose, thank you. More oh. Primrose, uh, you are approaching at high, at warp speed a star. It's a ins it's a pretty insignificant red dwarf on the grand scale of things. However, it just so happens to be right in right along your um path that you just need to, you know, whip by it at the at an appreciable fraction of uh, warp speed. Uh, so this is going to be um, this is going to be so more. If you could please roll me an astrometrics test, this is going to be reason plus science, and this is going to be aided by the ship's computers plus con to devise the best way to do this. Difficulty. Uh, this will be a difficulty of four. All right, I'm gonna take a momentum for a third die. Okay, you're gotten very quiet there, Scotty. Oh. Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> I'll just bump you on my side. There. Probably the server. Could be. Yeah, I got disconnected when we right when we switched to. Ah. Okay, there uh, we go. Uh, more. Let's see how you do. Uh, ship can assist with computers plus con. Oh, there's three. I can. We can uh, reroll the ship with my technical expertise, and I can reroll mine with cautious. Okay, uh, so if Noel could please re-roll the ship. Haha, -ha, we both got a success. All right, so you're now five successes on a difficulty four. Ooh. Awesome. Okay, now it comes time for um, Primrose. Yes. This is going to, you know, you have a course to follow, but it's still going to be very, very bumpy. Uh, this is going to be a, normally, this is going to be a difficulty of four. Uh, you know what? Because I ha because uh, Moose gave me some, I'm going to spend some threat to increase the difficulty to five. However, okay. because you have your various talents, I believe the difficulty is now a three. Yes, it is. So. Uh, uh, let's. Yeah. Uh, we don't. Control plus con for you, please. And the ship can assist with engines plus con. And I'm going yeah. to spend some threat to increase the complication range, 18 to 20. Okay. Yeah. Um. There's the one I'm looking for. Let's do momentum for a third die. Okay. And I definitely have a focus here. Oh, nice. There's your Thank you, Primrose. Four successes, which is good because the ship doesn't do all that. The ship fights you every sec, every second, but you know, through just you know, once you pilot something, everything sort of flies. This, you know, you get the feeling of one ship, you can fly them all, right? That's how that yeah, works. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, uh, the SS Concordia whips around at a, an appreciable uh, warp three or so. That's only a 15. That's not a complication at all. I'm sad. Sorry. Eh, well, that's fine. And buckets off towards the uh, Nalu. Uh, however, because you flew so close to the sun... There is some radiation exposure. Only those on the outer decks, or uh, the outer hull. Mr. For Forliza, can I please have a uh, control plus medicine test from you? This is Ooh. going to be a difficulty of three. And because okay. you've now had at least a day in your sick bay, I will give the sick bay... I will once again give you the... Ah, give you the sick bay advantage so okay. if you want to, basically about 10 individuals are sh coming in with uh significant amounts of radiation sickness they were either working on the near the uh tail end of the ship or right near the deflector dish right up the front and thus caught okay. the worst of it um let's see uh i will take a momentum for a third die okay and then um, emergency medicine or triage is a focus. 
I'll put triage as a focus, yes. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So, control, medicine. There's a of two. Of course. Yeah. Well, um, now you, you do the ship can ass either the ship or Krim can assist. Uh, the ship can assist with. Let's do structure plus medicine. Yeah, let's. Uh, Krim, get over here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a seven to two for the ship. All okay. right, what's Krim doing? Uh, Krim can roll uh, controlled medicine, presence medicine, anything along those lines. Uh, oh, control okay. medicine. Control I think medicine. Probably be... Yeah, probably. Uh, internal medicine as a focus? Sure. She's assisting. Mm-hmm. Nice. nice. Okay, so that is two X or two successes. So four in total. One more momentum for you guys. So, and because I just want an excuse to use this set, um, Captain, you are in your quarters. Which are much oh. cozier and far colder than you remember. Okay. And oddly enough, there's a dog. It's you don't know why, but there's a dog. Apparently, it comes standard with the ship. Um, it's Aww. a it's a Klingon Targ. <laughs> <laughs> Is it blue? Uh, no, it's not. Damn. Uh, uh, you. There is a chime at your door, and Hadrix is outside with a data pad consisting of everyone's uh, work efforts for the day. Okay, Come you... on, then. Captain? Yes, Commander? We've got quite a bit done here. Looks like we're getting everybody kind of mobilized and set up to be able to Get the ship where we need to get to to get back to the Nalu. Adrix? Yes? Fluffy. What? <laughs> I point out that there's a dog in my quarters. Oh, who's a good doggy? <laughs> hey, I liked looking at the dog on Earth. Ah, yes. It was in my quarters for some reason. I don't know what this... <laughs> Very confusing. Captain, if you don't want the dog, I'll, I'll take the dog to my quarters. Uh, that probably should be the best. There it is. There's the puppy. Oh! <gasps> Oh, <laughs> delay he's reaction. Even, he's got a, and he's even got it. Well, I, I'm watching on my TV, so there is the delayed reaction, <laughs> and it's even got snow with it. <laughs> okay, Captain. So, um, I think we've got things ready, and I think we've got a really good plan to be able to take you off that station once we get there. I was going to say, now now that we got everything ready, we need to figure out how we're going to get them off the station. Uh, let's, after, I said, on our way in, let's meet up, uh, let's call a meeting and discuss where we're at and get back to it. Okay. So, sounds good. Then he goes over and get, picks up the dog and be like, come on, we're going to come over to my, my quarters. It nuzzles up against your uh, cheek whispers, whiskers. Dogs love me. <laughs> He's gonna carry it, around, carry it around for the rest of the adventure, just exactly. like on that game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to take our Part break. Of your token. <laughs> uh, so we're going to take our break. Uh, so let's be back in about ten minutes. So half past the hour. I right. hope you guys are having fun because after we get back, shit gets real. Uh, I will talk to you guys soon. As soon as I mute everyone here. 
And we are back. Yeah, start of the next day. You guys are still at warp, but you're making very good time, thanks to the slingshot maneuver. And Captain Bashir, you stride on board the bridge, bright-eyed and bushy antennaed, ready to tackle the next problem, which is going to be, what the heck are you going to do when you get there? You ha By your estimates, you have about six hours or so before you arrive. Crew, we know, I know we... One of the, I know, one of our transporters, like, if memory <laughs> serves, if memory serves, they're mainly used for transporting goods, if I'm correct. Right, Moose? Originally, yes, but they are rated for biomatter. Um, we have one. Okay. Yeah, and unless it's a danger situation, the captain, it won't work. Good. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and how many of the how many can the pods hold? The shuttle pods? Six? Eight. Six, uh, six, six to eight comfortably, yeah. Six to eight. Is that including and... pilots or Yep. Okay. Easier math. Oh, slightly. So we got 200 people we have to bring on. Well, that's the thing I've been working on. We might not have to bring anyone aboard. Oh. They have two I feel gravitational. Like I'm scared by about by what you're about to say next, but proceed. They have two yes, gravitational on, rings. The the rings are not uh, in a typical configuration of how we would like to you know use the gravitational rings ourselves. They are designed to keep pressure on the station because of their, you know, whole aquatic preference. But that's just for them to be comfortable. We could have them evacuate as much water as needed, and they only keep the remaining amount that they need to survive. And the other ring can act then as a... basically a balloon. Put a gravity digital field around or propel one out so when the wave hits it has something to bounce off of and it just pushes the station distributing the force along the whole entire superstructure the excess energy is then being used to reinforce its own structural integrity so okay interesting that way there they get to ride out on the wave then should relatively be safe can we get them far enough away? Well, that's the nice thing about Newton's uh, law. <laughs> Whatever's in motion ain't gonna stop. It's gonna keep going. So until it decides to slow down, it'll keep going. Well, the problem being is <laughs> what's going to stop it? <laughs> I know space is big, but that could also be very dangerous. Well, the other part of the idea is we use the ship. We latched onto the station. That's we what I was to... thinking, too. The risk of that, though, is more so towards us. We mess this up. We incur an overload. We have to detach and... Well, someone's got to remain on the ship to pilot it. These ships don't have a warp core ejector. Not a good one, anyways. Okay. So, if we use this ship to stop them, we'd have to evacuate uh, our crew onto theirs. Onto the station. Given the risk of this, again, it could overlord the warp core, and we will have a breach on our hands. So we have to be accurate. We have to have no room for mistake. And since we don't have lightning fast computers, this has to be calculated as soon as we can start. So we need to know if we're going to be doing this or something else. Let's do it. Well, I'll start feeding numbers to computers and see what we can bring up. Okay. Uh, that sounds like a moose and moor test. Uh, Moose, if you could please roll me 
a reason. So this is going to be a difficulty five test. And Moose, you can roll using, you know, uh, reason engineering. Moore can assist with um, reason plus science. And the ship, I will let the ship assist in this case too with computers plus science or engineering, whichever one you want. Could I make an argument for daring because I'm going to be bypassing a ton of safety protocols? If you're doing this on the fly, yes, but you're kind of preparing for everything to go off. Um, tell you what, if you want to give me two threat, you I will let you use daring. Sure. Okay. What's my role, reason science? You reason said? science. I'm assisting. Yes, you are. And if someone wishes to grab the ship, that would be computer science or computers engineering. Oh, oh I have, man. I have a rope. Go for it, then. Um, computer focus? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, computer I focus. have a horrible idea. Oh, boy. It's a, it's a phrase that uh, I like to say every now and then. It makes the GM happy, but everyone else... Mm. <laughs> oh, boy. The torpedoes? Mm. <laughs> Don't it is. It is to save five. It is safe to save uh, two hundred plus lives. Mm -hmm. It is. Are you giving me the, uh, a lot of threat? The beans. Okay, I believe I take six threat from that phrase. Jesus. <laughs> cool. Well, he's now back up to full. Yeah. Then some. Oh. Jesus. Okay. Okay. Now, determination to reroll sure. the zeros. <laughs> Okay. So the, the three. Which value are you tapping? No matter the error, I know how I sh should feel. I will do whatever it takes to return home to my family. If grind by the book doesn't work, write a new one. Necessity is the mother of invention. So what are any of those? I can think of a <laughs> yeah. good argument for about three or three of the four. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So re-roll those three zeros. Not con engineering. Yeah. Ah. So that is a grand total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven successes on a difficulty five task. So you get two momentum. Eight, is it? Uh, one, two, three, four, four five. Six, oh, I eight. forgot the Concordia. Yes, sorry, that's eight. Uh, so that's uh, you're back up to uh, uh, five momentum now, I believe. How many challenge dice? Seven. Uh oh no this isn't a uh this isn't an oh. extended task this is just a one off thing. <laughs> okay cool. Yep. Okay. So we're going to have a scene change which means you lose one of those momentum. Four. And that is going to bring you back out to here. Great. So uh, the U USS Concordia doesn't show up instead the SS Concordia does. But very similar situation, uh, except uh, even with your poor sensors, you're able to see that the stars, act, the white dwarf's activity is very, is heating up very quickly. I put a countdown come up on the screen. All right, your countdown is a proc is estimated to be three hours. Calm them. Okay, uh, you Hi, hail. Sir. That's, I think, technically me now. Uh, yeah, that's you, Moore. Matrix Quayla appears on the screen. Hola! Ilialo! Hola! Kila! Matrix! Okay, and translation is... Oh, uh, roll me a, uh... I guess that's an insight... Or no, reason plus science... And you can have the computer or the ship assist with communications plus science, and this is just going to be a difficulty of three. Reason plus science. Linguistics, translations, alien languages, that sort of thing. I definitely have linguistics. You do. Me too. <laughs> uh, I'm going to spend a moment for a third day. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I might have Nalu relations, cool. but I don't have Nalu translation. Well, I. Uh, it was a science, so I do have uh, a reroll. Mm -hmm. And someone has to get the ship, too. For... Oh, there's the ship. So the oh, ship well. got you the three successes you need. So let's see what happens when you reroll one. 
Okay, technically so nice. re-roll the other with technical expertise. Oh, no, I can't. No. Nope. comms for that. Okay, uh, so that's a grand total of four successes on a three task. You get one momentum. Uh, so, thankfully, you, while rusty, uh, you do understand their language well enough. Um, they are... Uh, it's going to be difficult to properly communicate to them in a, um, you know, standard English. But you know enough that you can come up with a basic, you know, translation. So, I, I start uh, just kind of translating and translating what they sent to me before I respond back. Ah, uh, yeah. So, basically the same... Oh, uh, this is uh, Matriarch Quela of the... Um, I forgot what I called this station the first time. I should have taken that note down. Uh, it's a Deep Station 3. Or let's call it Terraforming Station Alpha. That sounds better. Uh, who are you and why are you here? Um, I'm going to uh, send back... This is the Concordia. Uh, we were sent to evacuate the station. Okay. At translating, we are from USS Concordia. Uh, the Nalu sent us to help save you. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, roll me a presence plus command test. Either captain or more, whichever one. And the ship is going to assist with communications plus command. This is going to be a difficulty three test. I'm shooting for a 12 from Presence Command. Okay. Yeah, I got about a 15. Not to mention uh, my leadership thing, linguistics, mm -hmm. whatever. So I I'll take this. Uh, I'm going to take a die. Okay. Guess, yes. Come on, baby. Please, let me get a decent. There we go. That's the three. <clears throat> You are able to communicate uh, the, your ship's intentions uh, in a pleasant and non-threatening manner. Even um, she eventually types back, or what comes over is the is a text communication, and it says, "Starfleet has a translation system. Yours appears to be broken." Perhaps yeah, because they understand us. We can't understand them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Basically, yeah. So, uh, how are you going to uh, get? So, what are you guys going to enact? Is this uh, the plan, Operation Pillow Fort, or Operation Shuttle Tag, or what? I think we're going to try to. Uh... We're going to go with the blow the station out of orbit and uh, basically transport. The, we'll move our 50-some people to their station, and Moose is going to bounce us out of here. Okay. This will be fun. Mm -hmm. Okay. Unless, unless someone's going to stop me. <laughs> Adrix? Nope. All right. Stop in your Let's cap. I was gonna say, yeah, this is you're my number one here, man. This is your time to stop my. Okay. No, because if you do something me. stupid, I become captain. Good call. Uh, no. I'm sorry. Did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure Chakotay made the same threat once or twice, so you know. All right. So we're gonna evacuate the entire crew. Um, okay. I want. Uh, engineering staff to get this thing ready. Um, yeah. Everybody goes. Okay. Uh, so all oh. the work you guys have done to do prep work for, you know, to host Boy, everyone geez, is, is okay, okay. you know, eh, such as it is with Star Trek. They, they build up the first 40 minutes in one solution, then that solution fails at the at 11th hour, and they have to fly by their seat of their pants. Yep. Yep. That's yeah, pretty normal. Okay. Um, so, for Lisa, I'd like you yes. to make a... Um, let's roll a control plus medicine test for you. The ship okay. can assist with... 
Um, that's a good one. Um, probably structure plus medicine. Basically, what this is is you preparing everyone for, you know, life on board a Nalu inhabited station. Um, you know, ensuring that everyone's gets the proper inoculations for an aquatic world, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Gotcha. Uh, this will be um, a difficulty of three. Mm -hmm. And if I can have the, either Primrose or probably Tegan, the small craft pilots, uh, please roll me a control plus contest. Actually, let's each one of you do it. Um, sorry, I've just realized I've asked for Lisa to do two rolls at once. So let's let for Lisa do his thing first. I'll do T again. You're good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, momentum for a third die. Sure thing. Let's see. Um. Oh, what just happened? Hold on. Control. Medicine. Three D twenty. Um. Not sure if any of my focuses apply here. The closest one I could find is xenobiology, but that's no, probably... not in this instance. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> Ooh, d turns out you don't need it. Uh, four successes. Hey, uh, so right. that you get that momentum right back. Nice done. Uh, so you're now. Uh, what's the? Sorry. Go ahead. Um. So with uh. You're, you're at the airlock, and you're busy uh, passing out um, medical balms to individuals. Uh, this is before some hype, before some medicines were deliverable via hypo spray. And people had to rub oh, it into this. God, decon's going to be the worst. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, no. Assuming everything, assuming people survive, that is. But, you know, um, you, know you don't have to decon if the ship's dead. Excuse you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so, if I could have uh, Primrose and Tegan, please do a control plus con test for their shuttle pods. You should see a shuttle pod sheet, which can assist. Uh, this is just going to be a routine task, so difficulty two. Just to see how well the um, transfer goes. Well, okay then. <laughs> um, Tegan needs I'm... to relearn all of the things, and I need to activate him with the value. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> let's let's try and net us some. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen after Chris. Uh, I'll just do a momentum for a third die. Okay. What was the shuttle? Uh, shuttle is going to assist with uh, engines plus con. Um, Tegan's going to tap his value. Hey, let's God. go. Ooh. And what value did Tegan get? Uh, failure is not an option. Okay. Because, I mean, he's also a transporter, so failing yeah. at that is also not an option. True. No, no. So, um, Tegan's shuttle pod does not assist. Um, Sunbay, can you roll one more for Primrose? Wait, for Primrose? What? Yeah, uh, you're, you're each flying shuttles. Oh, 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 I need to write. Oh. Got it. And the same zero difficulty. from the shuttle pod and got very worried. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tegan got the two successes he needs. Primrose got four. Uh, so that's two momentum. Already gave it. Awesome. Cool. Uh, so between... Everything is going actually as smooth as possible. It's not possible to actually find a flooded interior of a space station i spent a day looking this is the closest i could get for the feel of the station um granted you guys are the the nalu are kind enough to offer you a uh, oxygenated environment but this is what most of the station looks like uh fairly tight corridors but they're very tall hmm. and flooded with water and it appears to be sunlight coming in from above, but upon closer inspection, it appears to be uh, solid LEDs or similar uh, strips just beaming light down to at least mimic a natural watery environment. The Nalu's computer's environments are vertical, 
because they can just swim to them rather than you know horizontally laid out like your bridges hmm. so, interesting yeah uh there's a abundant amount of sea life uh the walls are covered in reef like structures that your try um your primitive anal or your primitive tools say is reef um there's lots of uh, fish, seaweed, etc. This is a living environment, not just a sterile space one. And the Nalu all seem to be quite comfortable here. Anyways, so I am going to. So what I need to ask now is senior staff um, order of departure. Um, so who is? going first and who is going to stay until the last minute um is moose are you going to be the one to pilot or is primrose going to stay no. behind no everyone goes i'm staying oh captain's staying okay we need moose over there to make sure this works on their end okay captain you're the captain you need to evacuate this is an order Take care of my crew. Your first officer, you can belay that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to listen to him. I, yes, sir. I, I was going to say, he's got a dog under his arm, and I shake his hand. <laughs> and then the other hand. <laughs> okay. So, one by one. If anybody oh, has... I'm in, I'm in engineering. Ah, yes. One by one, everyone departs the ship. If anybody has any f words to say to the captain, now might be the time. Nope. Apparently they're extremely <laughs> trustworthy that they will see you again, Captain. <laughs> they don't have any final words for you whatsoever. Fair. Nice. Great. I mean, Moore will pretty much say that as soon as he's getting in the turbo lift. We'll see you in a little bit. Okay. Uh, Moose, so you've done all the calculations. You've done all the work before... Um, if I can have you please do a presence plus engineering test just to convince the Nalu that yes, this is going to work. Trust me, I'm an engineer. I've done the math. Uh, this will be a difficulty of three. And I anyone from the crew can assist this role. So probably Hadrix, I assume. I assume. Let's have Hadrix assist with presence you. plus command. Uh, I'm going to snag a momentum for a third dice. Okay. Um, so I'm explaining to them what I'm I wanted to do and show them how it all like how the plan works. Mm -hmm. So could one of my focuses come into play? Um, so I'm explaining ones, to them. Which ones do you have again? Uh, electric power system, experimental technology, jerry rigging, warp core mechanics, fabrication, mako. Mm -hmm. uh, I can flex at them if you want to use full body <laughs> workout. I mean that <laughs> might work against their guards who are you know big buff eels. Um. Let's use jury rig as a focus here. So that's basically what you're doing to their systems. And Hadrix, of course, you can assist with diplomacy, friend of the Nalu, whatever. Oh, now Nalu relations, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Nice. So that is five successes on a three difficulty. So two momentum for you guys, which is good because I'm going to spend some complication as a pre-programmed alert goes off on the Concordia that the Nova has begun. Right. All right. Um, so whether the captain ordered him to or not, the only two people on the Concordia right now are Moose and the captain. As we Moose go. has to go. Too late now. He's on the ship. The star is going boom. And let me just recenter the screen a bit. We're there. And then I go to this. Besides, the star's probably going to more, go more like pop. <laughs> and where is the Concordia's token? Just because I think it's cool. Where, oh where? I have so many bloody things open. There you are. Concordia. Engineering to bridge. I hold the button. <laughs> bridge! 
since we're going to be doing something really stupid here, I figured I'd get permission if you're okay with me uh, playing something across all systems. Oh, God. Go for it. I'm going to go over to the computer terminal and punch in a song, firing it all on all six decks. <laughs> Johnny Cash, one piece at a time. Cool. <laughs> you mean you're not going to do Burning Ring of Fire? Not for this one. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it wasn't Sabotage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, just getting things in place here. Okay. So, the supernova begins to go off. And I'm going to spend some threat be to have it go off a little more violently than predicted. So it is already at approximately twice the size that it should have been at this point, and speeding up. Um, so Moose and the captain are on the ship, and people on the station. Um, so Noel, I need you, please, to roll me a daring plus engineering test, please. And this will be assisted by the station, which doesn't actually have numbers, so I'll just roll a d20. All right, I'm going to have to pop my determination okay. using the value of, if I can help, I will. Okay. Well, good news is that the station assisted. So Moose's, um, Moose's enhancements, or possibly the crews mining them, one or the other, are doing well. And I'll take two dice for a or two, two momentum for a third die? Sure. Five. There we go. That is the... Th that's four successes. Nicely done. And, oh, yeah, you popped your determination. So that's five successes, six successes, I should say. Well done. Well done indeed. Okay. So question, does it mean we have floating? I believe you do, yes. You're at three right now, you get six, so you have three floating. So I'd, I'd uh, like to suggest we use two for an advantage, that um, while it is a violent explosion, we're in a weaker part of the blast, potentially. Okay, all right. We're at a spot where there was a sunspot, so it didn't, it had to break through the, the crust. <laughs> okay. All right, that's perfectly acceptable. Uh, let's see, Moose, you are on the ship, and mm -hmm. the uh, watching through a tiny view monitor, probably similar to Spock's library computer, I would think, just, you know, more primitive. You're watching the ring of fire continue to expand, and as soon as I... This, was, this worked far better in my head. Watch them get closer and closer to the ship. Here. Until finally, it buffets the station, causing the station to uh, rock like a rubber duck in a ocean. And the ship, and I'm going to spend a bit of threat here, um, because the energy of the blast was more powerful than predicted. The station suffers a few breaches. And let's roll a couple challenge dice. Oh, that is, uh, that's, uh, four effects on those breaches. Oh, God. That is oh. going to be a significant number of individuals oh. hurt. We do have one floating momentum. Still. You do, yes. Um, could we use that and another one to create the advantage that they had prepared and reinforced key areas? If you want to, sure. I mean, I like that idea. Or we okay. could say that maybe some of the modifications gave them a bit of a resistance. Yeah, that would work too. So I will knock off two effects, and therefore there's only two uh, effects. So, let me roll. Um, let's roll 2d6. Ooh. 
Six and six. Well, I'm not going to have any repeats on this, so here we go. Oops, I only wanted the first day. So six and three, which are one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, oh, this is entertaining. Um, so you still got your doctor. You still got your doctor. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I'm sorry, but I don't. I have number six and number three in line, which in this instance is Noel and Ferliza. Wait, what? I should be six. Yeah, Moose should be six. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was counting down. Wait, the... three. If we're doing three yeah. and six, it would be Moose and Two, more. Three, four, five, <laughs> okay. Six. Mm. No, yeah. I like three. Yeah, I like my, my first thought was going down the list of characters in roll twenty. So I'll do that instead. Oh. Sorry. So. Boo. Uh, both Noel and Ferliza are injured. Uh, so right now you're both injured. You can roll to, you can succumb to the injury and just be knocked unconscious and unable to assist for the rest of the um, part. Or you can um, roll a fitness plus medicine test, difficulty of one, to ignore the injury and keep going on. Now, I had already popped my determination, so does that play in it? Uh, nope, you uh, no, you kept your determination to keep the station for only suffering this much damage instead of more. No, remember I popped my determ I popped my determination. Okay, we did an advantage for the the oh, station. Yes, you did. Uh, um, if you do the roll, then you can continuously do the roll, right? I believe so. Right. Yes. So you can always roll to avoid the injury. But if you take the injury, you're out. If you take your determination and you get injured again, you're dead. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if I fail the roll? Uh, if you fail the roll, you're unconscious and out. Okay, that'll yeah. work. So, fitness what? Fitness medicine, please. Oh, my two best stats. <laughs> not. They, they're they not his two best stats. <laughs> I don't like um, can I, I add guess, a yeah, determination I'll or a, a momentum? Go for it. Sure. Um. Yeah. Well. Oh. Um. Uh, emergency medicine is a focus question. Mark? I'll let that fly. Well, no, Hell you yeah. actually got two momentum. Yeah, well, you did get two momentum, and for Lisa got the. You both managed to succeed. Uh, for Lisa got one momentum. Noel got two. So, and you're at zero. Or sorry, there's one complication. For Noel, um, one floating momentum. Yeah. Too, too bad I'm not assisting you. I could just say parent figure. Mm. Yep. How do I want? Do I want to complicate that? Yes. Yes, I do. Uh, so Noel, uh, you are yeah. busy um, collaborating with the engineering group, and you managed. You take a. Uh, you take a falling beam to the head, and which knocks you. Puts you through a loop. Um, however, you are you ma you are managed to be saved by one of the chief engineers of the Nalu, a rather um, let's just say pleasing to the eyes if you're into a half female, half eels kind of creatures. Um, as she uh, Who manage, manages to reverse your concussion psionically. So in the meet, so good news, you're back. You are you're good to carry on. Bad news is is that you are now um, mentally bonded to a chief engineer of the Nalu who has taken a fancy in you. Oh, joy. Yeah. We'll see where this goes. Fade to black. Especially considering how bullions are kind of toxic to people. Yeah. I mean... And, and pan to the fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, on the ship, Captain and Moose... Your engine. There are several breaches to the station. Thankfully, this was well prepared for, and there were no uh, casualties. Several, or at least none, ejected into space. Now it's time for the Concordia. Now it's time for the Concordia to do her thing. Um, Captain, you're on con. Moose is in engineering. So this is going yep. to. Uh, so Captain, as you are going to be in con. Where's the bridge here? 
let's see get my get the right layers going here you're there this is going to be a difficulty of four test this is going to be uh, daring plus con I will let moose assist with probably daring plus engineering at this point oh just trying to keep the ship together I am going to use daring. Okay. And if you want to spend some momentum, I will let, uh, to grant an advantage, I will let the ship, I'll let, I'll give a roll for the ship to assist too. Okay. Um, I am going to use an, uh, a die, of course. Mm -hmm. I am going to use, for my focus, I'm going to use lead by example, and I am going to burn um, one of my values oh. of boldly go. Oh, interesting. Burn as in delete it to regain. Delete it. Oh, yep. interesting. Okay. Uh, so if someone wants to get the ship, uh, I think my streak for the ship is done. Would EPS work with the uh, focus for assist? Yeah, I'll let that fly. And Darren Engineering Assist. Mm -hmm. Okay, two from the captain. Four. Oh, oh, four from the captain, right, sorry. Two for Moose. As this is going on, Moose puts a little picture of his wife and daughter on the warp core console <laughs> as he's working away. See how self see this is the this is an act of what's called selfless sacrifice, sweetie. Where this mortal somehow believes that his life is far less important than any other mortal. Let this be a lesson to you that they're really not, but they're expendable. They can be replaced easily enough. As Q sits in the captain's chair with his daughter nearby, both of them are in full NX era uniform. Admiral rank, of course. Um, I like to think that, um, uh, Bash Bashir, how are you currently reacting to this situation? I'll spin the chair around and look at him ah. and uh, I'll get up and walk over and go, my life is expendable if I can save others. Oh, such a noble sacrifice. It's what's been propelling your hum what your federation of planets out for the last couple hundred of your pitiful years but i must say it's noble how you've been able to maintain it for so long despite the borg the dominion the tholians and whatever else comes your way you no oh, me <laughs> i'm i'm but a finger dipping into a sea of uh, chaos I'm just here for the fun, really. By the way, who chose this music? I must say, it's quite fitting. Oh, um, Captain... So, did we pass your test? Uh, oh, he points back at their board. Captain, you might want to take a look at your cables there. Hmm. The, the sh One of the ship cables that's holding the station in place, or bringing the station to a halt snaps and the ship lurches violently. Uh, Captain, can I have a daring contest from you, please? Difficulty two. And in this instance, the ship will not assist. We add on actually momentum. A, a lot. Okay. I th think you still might be maxed out. We're maxed out. Okay. Um... How much is it to buy two die? Uh, oh, three. three. Three momentum. Okay. I will do that. All right. That's the three successes you need and one or two successes plus one more. So one momentum comes back. So the, the view for... Ah. 
the feeling for those of you on the station is like being inside a snow globe that is being shaken. Water splashing up and down the tanks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's none of you stay dry throughout this thing. Uh, their station was not meant to hold humans and against a uh, gale force hurricane. That is a supernova. But you are jostled, you are shaken, you are drenched and soaked. But uh, through it all, the captain and Moose have managed to bring this station to a lurching halt. Somewhere, a pr maybe an additional, you know, 300, 500,000 kilometers away from their initial location. You are... Safe. Uh, nope, that's the wrong chart. This is it. You are safe. You are sound. Same cannot be said, sadly, for anything else in this neck of the woods. But you are here. Uh, as soon as I find all of my tokens again. There you are. do that there you go as soon as the uh, shockwave buffets passed the station hails you I do too <laughs> is everyone all right it is matriarch quela with hadrix and moore both in environmental suits I hope Moore's translating. Uh -huh. That's why. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's why Moore is here. Uh, Hadrix, your uh, faceplate has a nasty spider crack. We're doing okay, Captain. Just in better position. Uh, Moore, you're good. Uh, uh, more she whistles and uh, she whistle, whistles pops and clicks in the Nalu language which you are able to piece and translate well that they feel pretty much the same everything is damaged to heck something about their um, something about their terraforming bl their terraforming host will need to be uh, something about rebirthed she doesn't elaborate <laughs> I'll translate, and I'll even say that like, rebirth. He doesn't elaborate. <laughs> Overall, we're uh, shaken, maybe a little stirred, but we're here. Awesome. Well, I still have a problem on the bridge. But it's good to hear. The cheer out. Okay. Um, Moose, down in engineering, everything got hot. You are sweating. Uh, the oxygen, the air has is very hot on your lungs. But I see you rolled a fitness security test for some reason, so I will say that you powered through it like a boss. <laughs> I was going to say if you got flung around or possibly injured from the lurching. Yeah. Either way, you managed, however the environmental hazards threw at you, you were able to work your way through it using your full body workout. Sweet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to make my way to the bridge once the warp core stables now, stables, uh, right. stabilizes. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So you're not on the bridge just yet. You'll be there momentarily. Captain, you hang up with the station and trust that they will figure out how to get back to you. And you spin around and face Q and little Q, who are standing and applauding. Oh, bravo, Captain. Bravo. Yes, yes, very well done. That was fun. I can't wait to do this again, Papa. Now, now. Not yet, sweetie. We have to give these... We have to give them some time so that they can properly absorb the lessons that they have learned. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, 
thing. Uh, sorry, I think you're cut out there, uh, Bashir. One thing. Oh. I want my ship back and my crew. I suppose that is the least I could do. Yes, I think that's that's fair. Okay. Appreciate it. There is a flash. And all of you find yourselves back on the main bridge. Uh, Moose, you are in the turbo lift. Just as the flash goes off, as you're about to step onto the bridge, the last thing you see is um, both Q and Q girl uh, dramatically flash their fingers. And you are the first to set foot on the actual bridge. Uh, for Lisa, Hadrix, everyone is back safely on board. Uh, nobody is dry, except the captain and Moose. But Moose is all sweaty, so that probably doesn't count. <laughs> uh, the rest of the crew that's on the bridge will probably see that quite literally on Fort Lisa's side. They've essentially, like... Essentially stapled a wound shut. I'll get a thermal regenerator on that soon. Uh, Where's Q? Uh, one second here while I get other a couple tokens set up. Um, there it is. Right. Sirtha is next to uh, you for Lisa. If this was going to be their last moment together, she was at least going to be with you. <sighs> Uh, Moose, uh, you step on board. Do I see Q and Little Q, or are they gone? They're gone for the moment. Well, let's see if we got the ship back. We can uh, deploy the repair dock, start fixing up the station for any damages. Yeah, we need to contact the Nalu and let them know that the station's been taken care of. All of their people are safe. Uh, like I said, the... let, let me... Computer. Yes, Captain. Is all crew accounted for? All personnel are accounted for. More knowing Q shenanigans is going to scan the system. Okay. Is there any evidence of the actual Nova, or was that all Q? The... Uh, the Nova had happened. Uh, that is very much a thing. Um, the Nova has... The Nova, because it's a recurring Nova, near as I can tell, isn't as powerful as a proper supernova. Uh, it was enough to wipe out everything between the... Um, from the star to roughly the orbit of Mars or so. But as far as you could tell, everything beyond that is still intact enough yeah, there's enough gravity and energy waves that orbits will be jostled around for a while, but things will be settling down. There's just a large asteroid belt now. Moral will just lean back in his chair. Well, we somehow survived that. There's a lot of debris out there, but we're around. Everybody's accounted for. Uh, try to make contact with the Nalu. Uh, let them know uh, the situation. And hail server a station and let them know what's going on. Uh, Matriarch Quela appears on the screen. Captain. Matriarch, and I bow. I. This has been a very unusual day, I can imagine. First, we were preparing to evacuate. Then all of our sh our sh yeah. Then all of our, our subs vanished, and then you showed up in a ship, and then a new ship appeared. Once the rescuing, I'm assuming Starfleet has an explanation. Somewhat, uh, but I will happily uh, discuss it with you if you care to join me for dinner. I would be most I would be most interested to hear this story, Captain. 
I am unsure if what you what your species eats. However, I'm sure that we can find something that is amenable for both of us. We'll help you. Uh, uh, my chief engineer will help you with the rebuilding of the station, and we've already sent message to the uh, Nalu, um, letting know the situation, and everyone is okay. Very well, Captain. I must see to my people. All right. I shall see you when the tides rise again. I will nod and bow. Um, Moore, your, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, your uh, internal sensors are picking up a slight chroniton variation of 0 0.03. I just like tilt my head and probably visible enough that uh, the captain or Hadrix would see it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to run a scan, internal scan right at that spot. Okay. Uh, it is happening approximately five feet away from a uh, Lieutenant Nall, who is still trying to figure things out. Uh, it appears to be a temporal transporter signature, very similar to that used by the, uh, uh, by the, ah, by the invigilators of the 29th century. And out pops Specialist Zack, except he is not in his regular uniform. He is in a uniform of that of the 29th century, and he seems to be a bit older. Uh, his beard is a little better maintained and has large, long streaks of gray. Hey! Hey! Am I here? Oh. <laughs> hey! Oh. You've oh. missed three maintenance reports. Yeah, I haven't been around. That's why I'm here. I can't stay long. If they find out I did this, I'll be in major crap. You're in major I'm crap for not stopping. doing those reports. Yeah. <laughs> Look, Commander, things are much worse. I think I, uh, well, I stuck aboard the ship. <laughs> uh, something about uh, mistake, uh, temporal war, uh, I might have caused a little something. Um, anyway, I forgot something. Um, yeah, three reports. No, it's more important. Logger and Pilsner, they need to get fed. The poor guys have been gone. Haven't eaten in I don't know how long. Is that what you named those things? Of course. Bear. Leave Logger it. and Pilsner. Well, Leave I'll it get to Bud us. to feed them. <laughs> no, not that. Ah, oh, crap. They're coming. Be careful. Watch out for the... <laughs> Fades out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No. Yes, sir? You have to fill up three reports he missed. Aye, aye, sir. And go feed his pets. <laughs> More is just, like, dumbfounded of what just happened. Oh, the captain wanted something fun with Zach. A good ending for Zach. I figured that was the A good one ending to think for of. Zach, yeah. <laughs> so that's why that's why he hasn't popped up since the Christmas special. Because he stuck aboard the time ship. <laughs> uh, so what do they do in the future when they find a temporal stowaway? Eh, they adopt them. <laughs> I mean that's kind of what we did with Mo Moose. <laughs> uh, that's not kind of what they entirely do wrong. Uh, that's kind of what Star Trek has done with Every temporal yeah, basically. person. This is your home now. Is this kidnapping? Uh, okay. Is so, it kidnapping if they say yes? I. <laughs> so I have a couple small scenes, but I'm going to wait till almost the end to pop them, just because they're small role playing things. So, if any of you guys have anything you wish to do, now's the time. Uh, um, more than the captain in the captain's ready. Moore and Captain in the captain's ready room. Okay. With a candlestick. <laughs> the rope. <laughs> the revolver. Oh. I was about to Rope's, make the same thing. Rub somewhere else. Everyone takes a turn. <laughs> okay. Looks like you're already here. Cool. So, well, I'm actually outside the door, like, hitting oh. the door, the bell. Yeah. Come. Come in. Captain? 
Next lieutenant. <sighs> I need your help. All right, have a seat. <laughs> I sit up at his desk and toss a pad onto the desk. All right, I grab the pad and start to read it. On it's a letter from Admiral Janeway asking more to come and teach at the Delta Academy. This is amazing. I'd be basically a professor of linguistics as well as uh, adjunct in the sciences. Well, you definitely proved your skills with linguistics today. That's for sure. But don't get me wrong, like I would enjoy it. I have a PhD in linguist in you know linguistic things like that. I'm just troubled. Do I want to do it or not? choice you're going to have to make but it's an amazing opportunity oh, well, you'd be there's, missed there's tons of amazing opportunities out here but that's very true we're exploring out, a whole area of space yeah I came out here for the adventure but I don't know it something feels right about teaching language, especially in the Delta Quadrant, where we have not gotten a chance to analyze the languages there. So what do you think, Captain? It's an amazing opportunity, kid. I think you'd be perfect for it. And who knows? You still, I mean... The Delta Quadrant is still hardly explored, even with the, the fleet out there and Admiral Janeway's connections. I'd be an amazing opportunity. It As I say, bad. I can't make this decision for you, but like I said, you have my approval. <sighs> I guess I should probably go start packing, shouldn't I? Well, we can take you as back to Cerberus, and you can get a transport home with the slingship easily. It'll be hard finding another science officer with your skill. Yeah, there's a lot of really good scientists here. Somebody will fill my uh, shoes. Have you talked to Lagos about it? Not yet he's wondered why I've been acting a little strange lately the letter came in a couple of days ago I don't know what I should do with about that <laughs> I think that's a conversation you two need to have probably sooner than better True, but I also don't want him to feel the need to go out that far and just because I'm going there. Well, I'll get the paperwork ready for you and I'll sign off on it. I'll let Commander Hadricks know. I appreciate it, Captain. It's been a pleasure serving out here. I'll get up and shake his hand. It's been an honor, Lieutenant. I'll just smile as I shake your hand and then head on off. As I clear the doorway, I tap my cob badge. Lagos, can you meet me in my quarters? Okay. Um, let's just go down the Discord list. Uh, Commander Hadrix, do you have anything? No, I really don't. Okay. Um, Lieutenant Bla Brass Null. I'm kind of the same. Okay. Trying to figure out how to, I guess, trying to figure out a way to handle the relationship with being psionically bonded. Mm. That's going to be something to head cannon, quite literally. Ha! <laughs> uh, uh, Doctor Ferliza. Um, I've I've got a couple. Okay. Um. Neither involving Forliza, actually. Okay. 
Um, one actually involves uh our good old Gunther Void Runner talking with the captain, so we can keep the same set piece. Sure. Let's find a Void Runner, who is out here. Okay. Oh, sure. When I try to sacrifice myself to save everybody, nobody has anything to say. But now everybody wants to talk to the captain. Yep. <laughs> uh, Mr. Void buddy. Mr. Voidrunner. Uh, well, Captain, about 20 minutes after uh, Moore leaves, there's another chime at your door. I put my own pad down as I'm trying to do something and just like, come. What's up, Captain? Mr. Void Runner, what can I do for you? Well, and remind me, McCall, the current captain of the Enterprise at this point would be Worf? Uh, no, it is. I think his name is Shar. Uh, an Andorian okay. by the name of Shar. Gotcha. I just couldn't remember since we had rescued Worf earlier. No, he's captaining a uh, Sao Paulo class ship called the Courageous. Okay, gotcha. Uh, okay. Cool. Okay, I'm going with that route instead. Uh, he'll <laughs> plop down on the chair and the slides a data pad over to you. Seems like a running theme. I grabbed the data pad. <laughs> uh, on it, if you would allow is a requested transfer with a uh, letter of recommendation of sorts from one Captain Wharf of the USS Courageous. Okay. I mean, so I guess since I sort of did some badass stuff with that uh what was it? that weird like space snake thing whatever that was uh i guess someone else in starfleet took notice so are you going to take starfleet classes i mean probably be boring as shit but i'm willing to I can go with that. I was going to say, uh, getting a transfer to a other Starfleet vessel probably needs some introduction into actual Starfleet, but I will approve it. It'll be the first time anyone from out here has actually gone into the uh, Alpha Quadrant to uh, be on a ship. It'll be nice for the uh, expanse all around. Good. I guess I'm looking forward to uh, learning uh, new things. So, uh, yeah, what if, uh, what if um, we run into your cousin again? Uh, tell him I said to go fuck himself. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> Anyways, uh you need anything else for me or uh can I no. go uh some buddies were wanting to celebrate in the iceberg, so Good call. I'll sign off on it. I'll get a hold of uh Captain Wharf. <laughs> All right. See a cap and he kinda of just gives you like a two finger salute and walks out and okay. i can give him a one finger slip <laughs> <laughs> um and the second thing if we have any set pieces on cerberus um not immediately but i can we can just do theater of the mind uh, oh we could just actually hang on give me a second let's uh, just use this we could just use this ready room as in place of crawford's office sure Uh, is this the uh, post briefing between captains? Uh, no, actually, Crawford had. Uh, I think we have tokens for him instead of yeah. Zier. I, 
Crawford is wanting to propose something to Admiral Riker ah. if he has the time. Okay, uh, give me a split second here. Yeah, I guess I should, you know, give you the chance to do stuff from Cerberus since those are your characters too. Here we go. Here we are in. Oh. You know, everything's archived. I can just bring things back at the push of a button if I've had them here before. Uh, so here's that. So, uh, Captain Crawford, you are sitting in your desk at some indeterminate amount of time after this incident, looking over a, a report filed under the Q. Oh, All God's sake. Yeah. And uh, it's not long before uh, Rami and, uh, informs you that uh, Captain Admiral Riker is, a, is heading up the stairs. I estimate an 85% chance that he will, and then the doorbell chimes. Oh, uh, and he'll set uh, his data pad aside and actually grabs a new one. Does the uh, TNG tug to straighten the uniform? Mm-hmm. Maneuver? Yes, the Picard yeah. maneuver. <laughs> the Picard maneuver. Admiral Riker. Captain. I... I was just about to get ready to depart. It's quieted down out here now that there's nothing to do with the uh, with the Remnant Alliance, and now I have to go out and see what's going on in the Gamma Quadrant. Apparently, they found some founders who want to stir shit up again. Oh. I'm sorry you're going to have to be the one that's probably dealing with most of that. Well, I'm sorry you're going to have to deal with Zir again. Uh, she's all apparently hopped up on Deep Space 14's bullshit. Ah, sorry, I'm... You know what? <laughs> ah, don't worry, I've, uh, I've handled her before. I think I can handle her a few more times. Good. Yeah, you know what the per you know what the uh, best perk about being an admiral, a fleet admiral is? Can't say I do. Well, one of them is, is I get to swear and no one can call me out on it. Now, what's... And he, uh, he does one of his, uh, foot over chair sit down maneuvers. Yeah, the Riker maneuver. <laughs> so, what you got? Well, uh, something that I think might help uh, make our connections with the species in the expanse here a little bit quicker. And he'll slide the data pad over, uh, and on it is plans for uh, legislation is probably a, a very generous term to use for this mm -hmm. um but it outlines something that he is calling the harkoof initiative oh uh where essentially for species in the uh lasai expanse it basically in a way if they would want there are things that they can do that would help expedite uh membership into the federation whether it would be you know having more of their species serve or vice versa or just community service the like mm -hmm. Riker looks at it raises an eyebrow reminding you of certain vulcans you may have met <laughs> puts the tape puts it down and slides it back to you that's a hell of a proposal captain now, not being I your direct understand it is. not being your direct <laughs> sector uh, report, I cannot, one way or the other, authorize it at this stage. However, if Zier gives you a beef about it, you have my comm code. I'm glad to know it uh, meets your approval at least somewhat, Admiral. And by the way, where did what did you end up doing with my pizza recipe that cost you how much? Strips of Latinum at that poker game? Um. You know. I'm not. <laughs> I guess. I would have no fucking clue what happened to that. It, would made, I? Its, it, it made its way I, into uh, your doctor's hands. Yeah. I got it from you. <laughs> would. Bashir have told me about that? <laughs> well, I'm assuming that's how the chain of commands work. He calls in favors with you, you pull in favors with Riker, and that's, you know... Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, I believe it made its way into the hands of our... of the uh, USS Concordia's doctor. 
Oh, yes. I saw some rather lengthy report of Dr. Doctor Salkin wrote on him about the Togalau. I kind of stopped reading after the first, or the um, first 15th paragraph, but he seemed fairly uh, capable and competent. I trust it's in good hands. And I trust about the same. Good. Captain, he stands up and extends his hand. Serving on this station is has been an adventure, and I'm so pleased to have met you and so many fine people. And I'm pleased to go over with you as closely as I have, Admiral. And he'll gladly, you know, accept Riker's hand. Uh, Rami, can you please prepare my uh, pl- please prepare my transport for myself and Miss Troy? We'll be heading out within the hour. And with that, he'll head out. Um, I believe that brings us down to Moose. Do you have anything for Moose or Demos or anything like that? Uh, visiting the captain. Okay. Back to the other captain's which, office. Which, which, which captain? Which, captain? And which, which character? <laughs> uh, ready room. Well, captain, you get at least a you know another twenty minutes reprieve before there's a chime at the door. Throw my pad down again. Come. <laughs> hey, captain. Good job today. Have a seat. Thank you, sir. Uh, here. Can you hand your pad? I'm requesting some time off just to go back to Earth, to spend some time with family. Well, Unless we want to take the Concordia back to Earth itself. Could do something with Space Dock. It's a possibility. We'll have to see. Uh... I think our next stop is to head to Deep Space 15. Uh, We're going to do a crew rotation. It'll be some time. We can always do some repairs and stuff. Uh, It'll be basically based off our next mission, but uh, may I ask what the leave is for? Yeah. Um, Just want to spend some time with my family. Get my wife and daughter back on Earth and... uh... After that last mission, kind of want to actually hug them. I could understand that. I'm sure that probably hits you, uh, probably where it counts going back on that kind of ship. Yeah. Too many Absolutely. missions. Too many missions where I thought uh, I wasn't going to see Talar. And now that I got a kid, I definitely don't want to have missions like that anymore. Well, I'd hope we don't have other missions like that anymore, but we're Starfleet. That's what we do. Well, we'll I'm all still for Starfleet. It's just that hopefully not every other week we get a weird mission like that is what I'm saying. Understandable. Yep, time off approved. No problem. Excellent. Just uh, keep in touch. I'll find where you guys are parked at when my leave end, and I'll make sure to uh, come back. (laughs) Good. I'm glad. Thank you, Commander. Have a good one. Shake his hand. Have a good time on Earth. Okay. Now, um, last chance for you, Hadrix. Come on, bring me a pad, bitch. (laughs) (laughs) Jokes on you. You don't have an XO anymore. He's getting promoted to captain. (laughs) Oh, Jesus. Okay. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Let's do this. Okay. <laughs> oh uh, god. Uh, Moose, on your way out, you almost run into uh, Commander Hadrix. Uh, thankfully, uh, you don't flatten the poor uh, XO. <laughs> Hadrix? Lieutenant Commander? Make sure you don't bump into any walls. I'll do my best not to. <laughs> something. Uh... Wait. Is there a puppy? Uh, of course there's a puppy. I just don't have the miniature at the moment. <laughs> no worries. Commander? Puppy? <laughs> I'm still working on a name for the puppy. It will 
will simply be dog. 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 It's like John Wick with his new dog. He doesn't even give it a name. He just calls it dog. Oh, God. <laughs> well, right now it's just puppy. <laughs> <laughs> dog already has a Star, a Star Trek canon dog. So True. <laughs> hopefully ours doesn't turn into some metaphysical creature. <laughs> Climbs on the ceiling, but... Oh, Jesus. Commander? As I'm picking up my pad and he walks right into my office... Commander! <laughs> Captain, how are you feeling after that last encounter? I'm fine. Okay. I'm just... I have the reports from the rest of the crew about morale and whatnot. It seems like a lot of the crew is going to want some time off after this issue because... I don't know if you'd heard, but it, like a lot of the crew, the one didn't transfer over with us kind of... Ooh, ended up in a limbo. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure if that was just me, but I barely made out any of that. Yeah, no, don't worry. I didn't either. You're roboting <laughs> again, Hadrix. I'm sorry. Jesus. Yeah, real bad. I missed all of that, man. Most of the crew that was left behind and not on the other ship seemed to be in a limbo, so they want some time off. I could see that. And it seems also that... Uh, we're going to be losing a few crew members. It seems that Lieutenant Moore is leaving us and Lagos is leaving us. And uh, we've had to, often a couple, uh, get, get the puppy off my table. <laughs> <laughs> puppy, come here. If he pees in my ready room. <laughs> hey, for a dog that we got off of a 21st century ship, it seems pretty trained. 20 second. Yeah, I think we agree. I agree. I think we all need some time off all around. I agree. And then after that, I think we've got some more exploring to do. I do too. I'll put a request into the Admiral and see what we can do with the whole crew. We could use some shore leave. And obviously the ship could use a little bit of a refit, even though we've at numerous ones that we keep breaking it. <laughs> I think we need to stay, spend some extensive time back over on Earth. Earth? Yeah, you're not the first one to suggest that, too. I'll put it in with command. I think it's a good suggestion. I wouldn't mind to see your soul system. I've only been there to the Academy, and I would like to spend some time on Orion. Oh, remind me when I take when you get back to when we get back to Earth. I'm gonna have to take you to India. India. It's a con. It's a country over in the Asian continent. Great food. I'll have to make you some on the way back. Excellent, Captain. It's been great serving with you, and I continue hope to continue to do more of that. Absolutely, I couldn't have done it without you, Commander. And I get to, I'll get up and shake his hand and get dog hair all over my uniform. <laughs> hey, he's the one that brought in the um, extra fur. It wasn't me. <laughs> I start snickering at about the <laughs> comment from Little Q. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on, puppy. <laughs> puppy follows because puppy is cute. And... Puppy is very cute. Okay, I have a quick thing, and then it's off to the captain, because captain wanted last scene. Um, well, I do have one closeout. Oh, yes. What is it, Noel? Since we're going back to uh, the Cerebus, yeah. uh, Neo, when he gets back to his uh, quarters, he sees he has a message. Ah, and oh, no. it's the message from? <laughs> Talking about extended no. car warranty. <laughs> you oh, son Jesus. of a bitch. You son of a bitch. I hate that shit. <laughs> so, do you open it or delete it? Uh, I open it. It goes in. It's talking about extended car warranty. Call this number to remove yourself from. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Remove <laughs> or call, do this number to call an operator. <laughs> so three options. Delete, remove yourself, 
or call the operator. Hmm. I feel like this is a trick. But let's call the operator. <laughs> well, you see the, the it, it start making a connection to makes another connection. To makes another connection. It's oh, like it's Christ digging its way right through um going through back doors making a secure connection and you get uh commander helsing uh specialist Nia. yes oh how you doing uh chief petty officer actually oh. but uh i'm doing well not a problem um you remember the last time we talked i asked you if you're might be interested in joining Starfleet Intelligence? Vaguely, yes. Well, had pulled some strings, and there is an opportunity for you. Comes with a commission. Of Is it just Ensign? No, nah, you can get you JG. But you got to go to okay. at the Academy for the gentleman's course for learning how to be an officer. All right. Uh, do have a girlfriend on the station I'll have to talk this over with, but uh, seems like an opportunity I'll gladly take. Not a problem. Um, I'll send some other um, information more your way. So if you do see any odd emails, you'll probably know what they are. Okay. Uh, thank you, Commander. Not a problem. Intelligence is going to get a fine asset. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I have one quick scene to do because I've thought of this ever since the slight plot hook was left dangling. And then we'll get to the captain's final scene. So, Dr. Freliza, uh, you come into your quarters um, stuffed, uh, tough, ah, Tired after a long day of dealing with Q bullshit. Uh, Sirtha is already in your quarters, or in the bedroom area, and she's dressed in such a way that will immediately relieve you of such things. Um, <laughs> as Orion no. partners tend to do. Uh, just before you um, jump in on such a, um, such a manner, or such entertainment, there's a knock at the door. A knock. Not a buzz, but a knock. If this is Q, I swear to Christ. I go and answer the door. It's Q. And Q girl. Uh, Q girl is holding a heart balloon. D uh, and before you, you know, make any aggressive movement, Q takes one step back and puts both hands up. Just, you know, doctor, doctor. I... I, I feel that we have got off on the wrong foot, and I would like to apologize. And through very gritted teeth, Morley's is just like, what do you want? Well, it's not me, actually. I would have been halfway across the universe by now. But, well, she da, my I'm trying to set a good example here for my girl. Well, I wanted to give you a uh, gift of sorts, just to... Well, just to say how sorry I am that, well, I've put you through this and have made you angry. It must be the Elorian ancestry in you that has caused you to have uh, such a negative response to me. And? Ah, well, he's waiting for some... Oh, yes, right. And there's a quick uh, cue flash. And I have the... I may as well use it one last time. In his hands is a snow globe of Risa. Before the destruction. A memento. Perfectly encapsulated down to one one hundredth uh, scale. You can I've taken the liberty of pointing out your hometown and all of your and if you you, you can zoom in like this and he shows you similar like an iPad. But <laughs> I hope this is pleasant, and he looks... For Lisa hugs Q. <laughs> Q is very surprised, and hugs back. He says, 
wasn't it? What about this consent thing? Uh, what mortals? And then he looks across and sees Sirtha just standing there agog. Oh, no, nope, no. Nope. I see I have interrupted. <laughs> well, way to go, stud. And, and that, he's gone. Before. Oh, oh sorry. I was going to say something to uh, Little Q. Oh, okay. I'll let this happen. Oh, those are the wrong tokens. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, so what do you wish to say to a little girl? Uh, I'll just sort of, you know, uh, crouch so I'm ish on eye level with little Q. Keep your dad in control, okay? And I'll just give her a wink. Uh, she grins. She giggles. And... They're gone. Oh, that's so fucking creepy. <laughs> yeah. They already had Pennywise visions with her in the balloon oh. anyway. <laughs> and, Good lord. And, uh, I will very gently, uh, set down the snow globe here on the desk. And, uh, fade the black, McCall. <laughs> fade the black indeed. Okay, Captain, you wanted the last scene. All right, give me the bridge with the entire crew. Okay. Next. Um, I am walking out with my pad that I've been working on for <laughs> all day long with interruptions. It is the start of, Al or it is nearing the, well, let's just say it's the next day. You're making a leisurely, um, leisurely warp speed to uh, Cerberus Station. No need to be too hasty. Captain has called all senior staff to the bridge at start of Alpha Shift. And, just and, alpha shift. I don't. I'm not calling everybody. Not oh, calling everybody. Yeah, sorry. I'm just, just walking out of my walking out of my ready room because I have a ending log and then yeah. uh, the bridge. Go for it, Captain. So, all right, Captain's log supplemental. Before I left the Nighthawk, Captain Singrel gave me a Terran book. I spent a lot of time reading over the years, or year, <laughs> and a quote comes to mind. So come with me where dreams are born and time is never planned. Just think of happy things and your heart will fly on wings forever and never, never land. I think goodbyes are sad. I'd much rather say hello and hello to new adventures and log. Pinrose? Yes. And I come down and I nod to Hedrix and sit down in my chair. Warp speed to Cerberus Station and to Earth. Of course. All right. That's it. That's it, folks. That has been a hell of a ride. I cannot say that I have had a... I have had a fantastic experience with uh, this group, uh, with uh, with Cerberus, with Nighthawk, with, um, with this game, The Expanse. <laughs> Forgot my own game for a second there. <laughs> um, I can truly say that I have had some great players. The, some have had to come and go over time, but they have all been great, and you guys are pretty damned awesome. So, uh, almost as almost as awesome, but uh, no, sorry, even more awesome than the viewers who are watching and who have put up with my newbie streaming shenanigans. So, whether or not you are watching this as it goes live, or five years down the road, I appreciate you. I really do. I don't know if I will stream again. If I do, keep an eye open on keep an eye open for on ELH's channel. If I don't, this has been a hell of a lot of fun, and you know, let's go let's go exploring. <laughs>